I understand you also have to know when to hold them and when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. You know why? There'll be time enough for counting. When the dealing's done. Please pay attention to the following announcements. Galactic regulations require that we advise you that Three Sheets to the Mouse is an adult-themed podcast and may contain content and language not designed for younger Padawan learners. Thank you for listening to Three Sheets to the Mouse, and have a wonderful flight. Sorted, but you'll be rewarded when at last I am given my dues. And injustice deliciously squared, be prepared. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 62 of Three Sheets of the Mouse. We're five average guys with love for all things Disney, and joining me this week on this week's show are four guys who can feel the force flowing through them Trenton. General Kenobi. Mikey. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Adam. But let's see how talented you are with it. And Tim. These are not the podcast hosts you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones you fucking get, so get over it. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the ones you want, but the ones you deserve. <laughs> We're here to talk to you about Disney booze, Disney parks, and a little bit of debauchery in between. So sit back, relax. Grab a spiked blue milk martini and enjoy the adult side of Disney with three sheets to the mouse. Uh, speaking of blue milk, so I was I was trying to find a cocktail to come up with uh, for the opening this week, and blue Russian. I just realized there are no alcoholic beverages in Star Wars, like in the films. Yeah, they that would, we know of. They would add nothing to the story. Well, yeah. they just don't have a call name, but they have cantinas and bars throughout the whole right. thing. Yeah, so I'm no, sure their that, empire but, is alcohol free. But there's no like, there's no like scenes where they're like drinking, really to like. Because highlight. they're busy trying to save the universe or kill each other, galaxy. But whatever. Han shot first. Well, I'd be drunk all the time if that was my job. But I did, I did look online and I did find some like Star Wars inspired cocktails, which I thought were really interesting. Um, and so I wanted to highlight one of them, and this was the blue milk, uh, the spiked blue milk, which is basically a take on a, on a classic white Russian. I made that before. It's horrible. It was so bad. (laughs) It was so bad. Yeah. So it's three ounces of milk, one ounce of, uh, of cream, one ounce of coconut rum, one ounce of amaretto and two ounces of blue curacao. And then you, uh, put everything in a shaker, uh, shake it up and pour it into a, into a glass. I'm not. I, I I know we've talked about it. I just milk and alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Then you put your fucking insulin pump in because that shit is gonna fucking Wilford Brimley you. But you're forgetting <laughs> Scott likes it sweet. You do not. You, don't you remember the freaking um, Lafouge brew disgusting. that he made and drank a whole pitcher of? This yeah, is true. Horrid. And you chase it with insulin. <laughs> I have never dumped alcohol out before, but we dumped those out because they were just horrible. Yeah, I'm so not. Disgusting. I'm not sure how that would go. So, uh, Trader Shan, uh, why don't you go ahead and make it, post it on the page, and let us know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with that shit. He'll find a way to make it good, though. Oh, he, he will. He'll find a way to make it palatable. If he makes it, three sheeter David Thacker will drink it. <laughs> This is true. All true things. Uh, so, Mikey, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, I've actually got a, a little brewski action happening here. I've got the uh, the Lupu Luau IPA by Dogfish Head. Uh, I'm, uh, are you pronouncing that right? Uh, yeah, Lupu Luau. Not Lapu Lapu. It's Lupu Luau. No pineapples, just like a coconut and a little bit of lime kind of bite to it. You put the lime That's in a, the coconut. It is, uh, it, it is our coconut-centric... <laughs> What the fuck word is that? Lupulio Party, this IPA brewed the tropical trifecta of toasted coconut, experimental hops, and and, and coconut water. This week on Three Sheets to the Mouse, Mikey pronounces Hawaiian words. It's not that. (laughs) Mikey goes hipster. (laughs) 
It's yeah, that's that, exactly what it's it is. It's not sweet like you would think with that coconut. The coconut's real subtle in the back. It's it's seven point three percent, which is Whoa. really strange for a, a micro brew or craft beer. This week on Three Sheets oh, of yeah. the Mouse, Mikey point? loses his shirt again. Again, <laughs> it, is, it is way too cold in this garage for taking <laughs> any articles of clothing off. I've got, I've still got socks on. Coconut usually isn't that sweet though. Like coconut water is not sweet. No, it's oh my not. god, coconut water is disgusting. But it's also no, but got I'm the just toasted saying, coconut, like, which I wouldn't know the difference. It could be just regular coconut. I don't fucking. I hate coconut. Coconut's really not that sweet. It's what you do to it usually that makes well, it super sweet. You toast it and you also milk it, Greg. <laughs> Adam, what are you drinking tonight? You uh, got some amber liquid in there. What do you yes, got? Yes, I do. I actually have the Smooth Ambler Old Scout Ten Year. Ooh, that is apparently really good. Brant loves that shit. It is really good. Yeah, it, it's very tasty. Brant Burke loves that one. Yeah, we sent it to him. <laughs> Tim, what do you got? Same thing or something else? No, I've got the... I'm still working on this. Glenn Finnick inspired by 1963. A surprising price tag only because it's limited to... This, this is pretty cool. It is limited to 24,000 bottles worldwide. Yeah. And there are, what, six, eight of them that we know of? Six. Well, you, us Those three, six. us three and Brand, I think, has, has a set of bottles. Ooh, oh, you, Mike, oh, you got a set of bottles? No, you only got two. You guys got two. I, thought you, I, I thought you guys each got, each got one. No, no, no. What are we talking about? Liquor. <coughs> I like it. Has a good beat and I can dance Scotch. to it. Yeah, uh, it's it's good. We talked about it on the show a little bit last week. Uh, it's good. Nothing great, but surprising yeah, price not, on it. I'm glad we um, I didn't spend what they're asking for. Uh, no. Yeah, no. that that would be that would definitely be a bottle to try before you buy if you can, because it's it's really not all that great in my opinion. Yeah, at a hundred dollars a bottle, definitely, definitely not worth it. Yeah, and you know, I was going to bring the second one over to my buddy's house yesterday because he likes Glenfiddich until I saw that one. (laughs) That's staying here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I I feel you. Trent, what do you got tonight? Well, I'm not proud of it. Uh, It's Corona Premier because we've been doing uh, a low-carb diet, which has actually been working. Um, I've lost weight, but I'm drinking less than premium beer. Unfortunately, usually if a if a beer has to have the word premium on it, it's not. It's premier. It's not premium. Well, that's Spanish for premium. I don't speak <laughs> Spanish. I live in America. But you went to <laughs> like, French English school for cooking. Shit. Yeah, and that's not Spanish, Mikey. It's it's all Latin. Fuck. Corona's great on a super hot day by the pool. Corona's horrible. Corona's horrible. It's disgusting. Yeah. You might as well be drinking Bud Light Lime. No! <laughs> oh. I just to me, they're both in the same category. They're both shit beers. I know we're going to piss off Miami Mafia, but... It's got 2.6 grams of carbs, shit. and I've lost 12 pounds in a week. So get the fuck out of my face. How many calories does it have? 90. Less than Michelob Ultra. It tastes like it. That's 90 calories right here. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, Scott... I live in South Carolina, and liquor stores are closed on Sundays, because... Oh, that's right. Fuck everything, oh, so. Wait, you want me to move there? That's not going to work. <laughs> wait, wait, I didn't know this before. That's not going to work. Knock up that is a deal breaker. <laughs> that Tim. is a deal breaker. No no deal. Tim, yeah. come down here. Just move to Oklahoma. It's a rough... It's a rough <laughs> liquor stores are open seven days a week. That, we j- we that's just got New beer York. in stores on Sundays, like, ten years ago, so... Well, we just got beers in stores, period, like... A month ago. Yeah, so yeah but we had liquor about? stores. Yeah, but we had liquor stores, and we can get beer seven days a week. We just had to go yeah, to the. We can get beer from the beer distributor yeah. seven days a week. We can get liquor seven days a week. We can get wine seven days a week. I can get I can get wine, liquor, beer every single day of every single month of every single year. Even on okay. Christmas morning. Even on Christmas yep. morning, they open at nine, and that is important. Yes. Liquor on Christmas is definitely important. Oh, yeah. It's necessary. Uh, speaking of liquor, tonight I got some Redbreast 12. I love this shit. It is 
you know, I, I've never, I never gave Irish whiskey a shot until Mikey uh, forced me to watch some YouTube channel, and uh, I love it. It's everything that is good about whiskey. It's smooth. It is friendly. Tastes like buttered biscuits. Mm. So I like, I like buttered biscuits with like gravy. I'm a no, not bread. those buttered biscuits. Like. <laughs> Buttered shortbread cookies. Oh, so so cookies then? But you you mean nope. so you're not biscuits, but He's cookies. been to the London biscuits, Mikey. Biscuits, team biscuits. Hashtag God. team biscuits. If anybody thinks anybody but Scott on the show's bougier, Scott is the bougie. <laughs> Scott might be the bougiest person I've ever met in my whole fucking life. No way. Oh, no, no way. No, not even close. No, that no I've way. met. He calls um, he calls cookies biscuits, and he lives in fucking New Jersey. But when I'm talking about. Because he's an anglophile. But when I'm talking about the buttered biscuits, or the but the biscuits that that I'm talking about, that I'm referring to, I'm talking about the shortbread cookies from, like, England. say it, the the right. London. That's no, why you call the them Scotland. shortbread cookies when you're talking about them, Scott. Whatever. Uh, so for tonight's show, we actually do have a show topic. Um, One of us does. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving the people what they want. The the who? The people, Mikey. The people. Our people? The people. The people. The people. We're giving the people what they want, and the people demand more Star Wars. Yeah. They may not after this Han Solo movie comes out. This isn't three sheets to the Yoda. Well, don't forget, um, from what I've been hearing lately, the um, at least some of the edits that were done on Rogue One saved that movie. Because it was just as Rogue bad One. from what I, I, I've been hearing originally. I love Rogue One. I love that movie came out awesome. But... So good. Oh, is that, is, are well, we you know talking what? about Rogue One? No, not yet. We're not yet. We're just talking about Star Wars in general. Um, Sorry. And I, editing. I tried. Because I tried. Let me tell you something. Uh, the editing. <laughs> the editing. First of all, makes a movie. There's a reason why Star Wars: The Original, uh, A New Hope, won an Academy Award for Best Editing. I share. I think I shared a video on YouTube about that, or on uh, on the the Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash three sheets, about how George George Lucas did his own editing for A New Hope, and showed that to Steven Spielberg and Brian De Palma, uh, Brian De Palma of Scarface fame, and they turned to each other and said, "Holy shit, this is awful. This is a fucking terrible movie," and Brian and Steven then said no you have to rewrite this you have to you have to do this you have to do this and george's wife came in and saved that movie so her, uh, her and two other guys basically recut the entire movie and saved it so was george solely responsible for phantom menace then like he didn't have his wife to tell him whoa, yeah, he divorced, whoa. oh yeah no he, he didn't run that by steven and brian oh god here we go he he divorced her after I think uh, I want to say in the eighties. Yeah, okay. well that makes perfect sense. Can we get? But explains why he can't write a love story. Yeah, can we get Betsy Ross Lucas back to he, to helm the uh, <laughs> Betsy Ross Lucas, <laughs> the, 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 the Princess Leia uh, origin. Well done. Uh, yeah, no, editing is very important. I, look, I think I think the solo movie, you know, again I go back to it. It's better than nothing, right? Better than no Star Wars. Not all the time. No, I mean, it, Woody Harrelson, known for being comedic. Donald Glover, known for being comedic. He's done comedic. some serious work, though. He's done some really serious Are you going to say uh, White Men Can't Jump? No. No, no, no. Um, Three Billboards. Oh, did he play like a serial killer? No, he was no. a detective in uh, True Detective. True Crime, whatever, yeah. No, you're thinking and of the was... cowboy way. No, it was an HBO no, he show. With, Way, he? With, no, he was with Kiefer Sutherland in Cowboy Way, wasn't he? Yeah. Or was was much. he the, the transvestite from um, Anger Management? Oh, I don't. I've never seen that movie. I don't know Jack what we're Nicholson. About anymore. Adam Sandler, but Jack um, Nicholson. No, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson can act. I mean, he was really good in Three Billboards. He was really good in True Detectives. He was really good in Cheers. I have a, I have a feeling that <laughs> he wasn't acting in Cheers. <laughs> I have I know a, he wasn't. I have a feeling this is going to be more along yes. the lines of his role in uh, Hunger, Hunger Games. Games. He was good a in that. Drunk too. piece of shit. No, that was Philip Seymour Hoffman. 
Pretty sure Woody Harrelson Woody was Harrelson drunk. Woody Harrelson peas. Yeah, yes, no, he Woody was. He was supposed to be in the movies anyway. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for it. I think I think Donald Glover as Lando will be pretty cool. I like Donald well, Glover. He's a, he's a good actor. just like him. I know. It's, it, kind of it's not the strength of the actors. It's the strength of the script and the strength of the story. Uh, I'm sorry. You can have the best actor, actors in the world. The plot's no good and the story's no good. It's not. It's still not going to be a good movie. Natalie Portman won an Oscar, but she was shit as Padme. Well, that's oh, God, direction. Here we go. I actually enjoyed Natalie Portman in the Star Wars movies. I right. think she was she was giving garbage to work with. That's true. Garbage, garbage in, garbage, in out. garbage out. Yeah, but I mean, you you with the you can't turn a turd into a diamond. Well, you can if you apply enough pressure. I, I don't know. I, I think I thought uh, I thought Natalie Portman was awesome in Phantom Menace because she had the the the, the dual role kind of thing going on. I don't. I'm like, maybe I just always liked Natalie Portman because I really love the professional. I mean, she's very... They did her up really you nice. Just, That's all I could say. Like, the makeup skills you just like that her they boobies. had was I have awesome. not seen Black Swan. Speaking <laughs> of movies, okay, so um, we're going to get to an actual topic, but I, wanna, I wanted to ask you this because this has come up a lot, especially with uh, trying to introduce someone to the Star Wars franchise. Like, my wife has never has seen, I think, one Star Wars and that is uh, episode three, which is maybe why she hasn't watched anything else since then. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's probably why she hasn't watched I liked anymore. episode three. I like episode three. I, I have I the high ground. That battle scene is so No, I really enjoyed it. Out, out of the sequel pre- I think it was very trilogy. bad at playing The Floor is Lava. <laughs> I saw that earlier, too, on Facebook. <laughs> um, no, the, the, the emotion in that scene with Ewan McGregor, it's just so raw. Like, you just feel the... The disappointment in his in his words. You feel, you feel the the like betrayal. You feel the uh, the anger. Dude, that movie starts badass. That movie ends badass. It does. It starts with that but, fucking crazy space battle. Yes. I don't mind that, that one. I just one really trilogy, don't like the trilogy. first one. So my question to you guys: How do you, how would you propose to watch the Star Wars franchise? Oh, for the very first time? For the very first for time. For somebody who's never seen it before up until now. Watch the original. Like, no, no one's seen anything until... They've seen nothing. Yeah, freshly. do you go... Yeah, do you go chronological as they're released? Or do you do what yeah. what's called the machete order? For somebody who's never seen them, do chronological I order. agree with that, chronological. One, two, three, Rogue One, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, that's... No. You know what? If for, I'll, I'll back Trenton on this. For someone who's never seen the Star Wars franchise, yeah, start them off with the shitty ones and get better. Well, you see, the problem I have with this, though, I, I take a different view on this, especially because the way everything kind of looks now, and even then, it start if you watch it in order that way, it's going to kind of look hokey. Some of the battles, oh, well, some of the, yeah, well. the graphics, some of the, some of the special effects are just not going to hold up. But you nah, George that. Lucas got in there and fixed a lot of that stuff. No, it's still... <laughs> oh, that's fucking horrible. But it's still bad. I mean, when you look at it that way, it's still, like... You, you can tell that you're just missing the strength sometimes. But yeah. you go into and it knowing that, though. I mean, you're not watching it for the first time thinking, oh, man, the fucking... And fuck Kathleen Kennedy for not releasing the originals untouched. On Blue. Is that There's Betsy Ross Lucas? There's still a chance now. No, that's not Betsy Ross no, Lucas. No, Lucas won't release them. Um, so, the, what we talk about in Machete Order, Machete Order is basically where you watch episode four, then five, and then you go back to the orig- the prequels with two and three, and then watch Return of the Jedi, followed you by the numbered releases after Return of the Jedi, <coughs> so then seven and eight, and then, and then you watch uh, Rogue One. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Well, you see, here's the thing with Rogue One. It gives... It, that story had to be built up. Like, you, you had to want to know. Like, I don't think that story would have hit as well if we didn't want to know as bad. Right. And, and But here, like, the whole point and, of it is to focus the focus the story on Luke and his journey. So you, you start with Luke, you continue with Luke, and then you go back to where he came from. And then you finish with his growth into... 
uh, an actual Jedi, and then his fall from grace and his his exile, and then with the last Jedi, uh, his his return to prominence and uh, and his ultimate sacrifice. Nah, no, that's dumb. I I I am still a big fan of the way they were released. Or if you're going to do it any other other way than I said, one, two, three, Rogue One, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would do. I don't have Rogue One. Ro- Rogue One has to be seen after at least after Episode Six. See, I don't think. I I think other than what I said, it's Rogue One was more a nostalgia factor than Episode even Episode Six. I would do if you're going to do it that way. I would do Rogue One, four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, eight. I I I think I agree with Tim. I think you have to watch Rogue yeah, One. Yeah, I don't think you after care the original trilogy about. Because when you see Vader come back on the screen, well, I just and you see the ending, you see. Um, right, has, but, but for somebody who's CGI Princess but Leia. for somebody who's never seen any of them before, to see that to be for that to be your introduction into Darth Vader just shows him well, as the most imposing no, but that's why you, villain. Someone who's never seen them watches them in chronological order. But why do we care about what they're doing? Like for story purposes, why is this so important? You would never understand why this is so important if you didn't right. see what the Death Star is capable of. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know that the reason they need to steal these planets because this is an ultimate battle station that can destroy a planet with a single laser blast, like why is this so of, big? Like it does at the end of the movie? Yeah, why does the sacrifice at, at Rogue One? Rogue One is a war film. You see, it at Rogue the end of the One movie. is a war film. No. Yeah, but, but why you, do you care about the whole movie at the like? It's at the very end of Rogue One. But you don't know. You don't know that Alderaan is. Spoiler alert. For anyone who hasn't seen it, Alderaan dies. Yeah. Alderaan dies. Everybody you dies. You don't know that that you don't feel the uh, like you don't see Alec Guinness or uh, Obi Wan. You don't see Obi Wan sink into his chair and feel the the death of millions of people crying out as one into the night. You don't feel that emotion of an entire planet getting destroyed. So then, when you go back and watch Rogue One, you're like, "Wow, this mission is unbelievably important." And they will give their lives to make sure that it that this mission goes off and and these plans get to the get to the rebellion. Yeah, I agree with Scott. And why there were, t- I mean, I didn't like ball, you know, as in like cry, uh, you know, tears, but I definitely got choked up and watery. At the end of Rogue One. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like I, it oh, is, yeah. but I cried it everything. Is, it so is I don't up count. there with it is up there with the raw emotion of Saving Private Ryan. Dude, when you see that Leia CGI, oh my god! It Not was even right, the Leia when CGI. You see fucking Vader back well, on the screen. That was fucking invigorating. I didn't say I got a boner. I said, well. <laughs> oh yeah. No, not even um, not even Vader the Leia or homeboy. the Vader part. I'm just talking about the the feeling that these people know that they are not going to live, but they have done their job and they are willing to give their lives for this. It is it is saving Private Ryan. It is it is the moment when Matt Damon's old self goes and visits the grave of uh, of Tom Hanks's character. Another spoiler if you haven't seen Saving Private Ryan. No He's been desire. under a rock for too long. Well, it was World War Two, so I'm pretty sure they've all died by now. Yeah, at this point. Yes, Tim. What do you what do you think the best way to watch the the, sh- the movies? Oh, for the first time, chronological order. For sure. Of release date when they were released. Released. Release date chronological order. Mikey. I'd probably start with the Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yes, actually. No, you gotta start with the triples. The trouble with triples first. <laughs> no, no. Technically, you technically you gotta start with Spacey, the original one that shows who Khan is. I, you know, I don't get caught up in what order to watch the movies because I, I'm not that huge of a Star Wars fan. Um, I would I mean. It, logically, I would say watch it the order they came out, um, because that's just that that to me that makes sense. I, I don't want to watch it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and somewhere in there you have Rogue One. I would watch it the order they came out. That way you have a little bit of uh, uh, you're invested in the characters. So when you get to see the backstory, you're like, yeah, I want to know a little bit more about what went on. You know, where where did Vader come from? Why is he what he is? Um, I've got no problem watching it in, in the order they were released. Now nobody nobody said it nobody said a damn thing about the fact that I did not mention that you have to watch in machete order, episode one. Right, because that's you, machete you order. Never that's episode machete one. order. Yeah. Machete it's order leaves out order episode, episode one. Always. Because you don't need it. I think you need I now, personally if, do. If you've seen them already, 
then definitely machete to, to see Vader's origin or Anakin's origin, I think it's super important, and I think it's a great addition to the story. I'm a huge Vader I think, fan, though, obviously. I think you can start at you episode two. You can leave two. that movie out and still yeah. no Vader. I Vader's. don't need a 20-minute pod racing scene. I'm sorry. If you, but, if, but, I mean, you leave that out, there's there's no Qui-Gon Jinn. There's no Liam Neeson. I'm okay with that. He's a great character, but that character can't float that whole movie, in my opinion. If he doesn't go before the council to plead his case, then there is no Vader. I, but I think you can just start at episode two and no, know yeah. that there's an Anakin Skywalker who is training to be a Jedi. You don't need to know that someone lobbied for him because he thinks he kills he's a bunch of Padawan. One. I've also changed my preferred order, I think. Two. One, two, three. Rogue One. Four, five. Then you watch all three Indiana Jones movies. <laughs> no, you have to watch the Indiana Jones movies first in your order. Oh, do, except no. for Crystal Skull. But no. how, yeah, does, does this include the Crystal Skull? Because Crystal no, Skull is no, another movie never, you can throw. I said away. three. I said three. Oh, come on now. You so so you are in favor of Crystal Skull being an Indian or not being an Indiana Jones movie, but but you're you're entirely with the the trilogy being Star Wars. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, that's completely yeah. different. No. How is no. it different? Phantom Menace is Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. No. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. I mean, the Crystal Skull at least had a throwback to, was it, Karen Allen as, you know. Crystal Skull had Shia LaBeouf in it. I know, and there's no, there's no fixing that, okay? There's, there's no. Or he survived, yeah. what, the, the refrigerator thing? Get the fuck out of here. No, the Crystal Skull could be summed up with one word aliens garbage yeah, garbage yeah it was a it was. garbage movie it was a bad it's a garbage movie. movie we paid to see that in the fucking Ooh, theater. oh i no. did too and i regret it ever since mm. i sell i sell the pirate ship all the way man on that one. Oh my god not worth your time money or effort or bandwidth for that matter yeah, I mean, if you can't, if you don't have a way to get paid for two and a half hours of that, it's not worth your time. Was that Kate Blanchett? Yes. That gets she eaten in, spoilers by bugs. Yep. Uh, I don't remember. Blanchett. I only saw this. This is the only one that I saw only once He's and never it watched it again. No, I never watched it again. <laughs> so, so going back, going back to Star Wars. Oh goodness. Going back to Star Wars, uh, we wanted to preview kind of what we know of Star Wars Land so far. We wanted to kind of get our thoughts on it. We haven't really talked too much about Star Wars Land. It opens in just over a year. Uh, we're thinking probably uh, late 2019. I'm thinking I'm thinking this is a fall winter open. Oh, They're yeah. saying if summer. We're lucky. I I think we're gonna get held back a little. Disneyland. All right. So the the the, the confirmed. Uh, opening date or opening is that Disneyland's Galaxy Edge will open first, and then uh, the Walt Disney World Resort will debut second. So we do know that that Disneyland will get theirs first. It is a little bit smaller, but they're both about 14 acres of land. It's a big expansion for both of these parks. Well, Hollywood Studios needs it bad. Yeah, absolutely. So, Star Wars Galaxy... Uh, first of all, I want to I want to preface this by... I am taking the information off the Disney Parks blog. A Disney-owned website. Okay, let's not make any if ands, or buts about it. Disney owns the Disney Parks blogs. The title no. for this article, right? Well, some people think it's a blog that people, someone puts out. Um, the title for this is... Nine Things We Know About Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So far. They have the same article open right now. Bullshit, you know it all. You just don't want to release it. It's clickbait. I know. Well, <laughs> I know. No, but I just, here's the, I just here's the game fun. with this. It's what they're, what they're willing to tell us right now. I disagree <laughs> with this totally. Here's the game with this. They're going to find out something that they planned didn't work out because this happens all the time with Disney. <laughs> this is true. This yeah. is actually true. And they take it away. So, like, the, uh, like the Disney princess houses that were supposed to be at uh, New Fantasyland. Uh, like my Tower of Terror bar. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so there are a couple things we they they do they have released so far. The name of the uh, of the outpost that is Galaxy's Edge is Batu. Okay. So um, that's the name of the planet. It's supposed. The, to be. Yeah, the, the name of the planet is Batu. It is a. Uh, 
It is a once busy crossroads at the old light sub light speed trade routes, but has been pro but its prominence was bypassed at the rise of hyperspace travel. So basically, it's one that was originally a trading post, and because now people can get from get to Coruscant quickly, they go there. It's Radiator Basically, Springs. Radiator Springs. <laughs> yes, yes. <Sam. laughs> Oh, God. There's rumors that it's going to be linked into the new books coming out. Nobody Starting reads. The new Thrawn book that's coming out. Yeah, I heard they did develop a whole book series based on this. Tied into the universe. Really? Yeah. It, it, I didn't hear it was a whole series. I just heard it's going to be mentioned in one of the books. I imagine that as this goes forward, there will be some sort of tie-in in the films. Yeah, oh, they will reference the the you know, Batu or whatever you the see, it's called. It, it'll just be offhanded reference, but people yeah. who have gone to it are going to be like, Oh I'm my gosh, there. they know it exists! Oh my god! And yeah, it's like, no, yeah, well, it, it was just a line that Disney said, you want to write this? You got to put that in there. Are, are you? Do you hear me, John Favreau? You got to put Batu in your in your Star Wars series. So the the time period of this is um, after Return of the Jedi, but before Force Awakens. So that's, that's the why time I can't period. see it going in the movies. Well, no, because the the planet will still be there after Force Awakens, but the time period that you're visiting will be uh, will be between the. Between well, this just gives them a chance to advance the storyline in the park, too. They can update it and say, hey, this now is after this yeah. story or after that story. So. I think they're going to keep it in the past. Yep. I think they kind of have to. And well, because the I think Millennium that's why the there. way they're doing it with the introduction in the book, because the book that they're talking about takes place around that same time. So if they make a movie of that, all right, I can kind of see it being mentioned. But if it's going to be mentioned in the newer movies, it's going to be a throwaway line. However, I can see it playing a role in, what is it called? The Han Solo movie. Because that's taking place distant ha past. Han yeah. Solo's big day out? Yes. <laughs> Han Solo's big adventure. <laughs> Han Solo's big Greek wedding. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Han Solo, this movie really didn't need to get made. <laughs> Yeah. If we, you want an uh, Obi Wan movie, you gotta sit through the shitty Han Solo movie. I know. Nobody, no. I want to see how he meets Chewie. P uh, it's probably it's, gonna be at like Han a, Solo in the Crystal Skull. Yeah, it, it'll be <laughs> Han Solo goes to Petco. As long as fucking Shia LaBeouf's not in it, I don't know. I hope he's in it somewhere. When, when Chewie was a little baby, Wookie, and Han had him neutered, and he had to wear the coat of shame. <laughs> no, 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 no. Isn't Chewbacca like 400 years old? Hang on, you yeah. think Chewbacca's neutered? Yeah. No, he's got a family. Haven't you seen the Christmas special? That was a joke. Oh. Because I was ready to go down this fucking rabbit hole, man. <laughs> no, I had no. my shovel, and I was ready to start digging. We were going to discuss this. No, as, no. You, th you, th you think he's got junk, though? He has lipstick. Is it a human, or is it like, he has a, red like rocket. a dog? Yes, he has a lipstick. <laughs> The little red rocket? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Little shit. You seen fucking Chewbacca? That didn't mean anything. He's just tall. Why do you think... Uh, it's probably proportionate. Why do you think yes. that... Uh, oh, shit. What's her face? Maz liked him so much. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, she looked... Don't even... I'm not even sure what the hell she was. An alien? You dick. They're all aliens, <laughs> you cork soaker. Even Luke's a damn alien. Alien racist? <laughs> Wow. I'm sorry, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, she looked oh. kind of reptilian, like a frog, really, with them, with, with the glasses she had on. It's all, it was almost like a salamander. So <laughs> so at Galaxy's Edge, we are going to have two attractions. One of them, they have, they've released a, a fair amount of information on, and that's the Millennium Falcon ride. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so one of the land's signature attractions will put you in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. It looks like there's going to be uh, six to eight people in this ride. Each will have some sort of job to do, buttons to press, a la Mission Space. But they'll actually No, but these buttons are actually going to do something right. from what I understand. But we finally upgraded 1998 technology and we can actually make the ride do things based on, you know, you're pushing or not pushing the buttons. Because if you crash the Millennium Falcon, someone's coming for you. Yeah, the uh, cast members or the uh, the people in the land will make fun of you and shit, right? 
Exactly. All I see happening Allegedly, is yeah. a little boy crying hysterically off this ride because his father just screamed at him for 20 minutes for crashing the Millennium <laughs> Falcon. <laughs> Well, you know what? That's, that's, oh, that's called parenting. That's, and, and you know what? You know what I'm going to yell at my kids about? Have you never flown before? <laughs> the controls are inverted, son. You pull back to go up. You pull up back down, to down, go down. up. Uh, so did, have, have, did, did you not see Independence Day? So my first thought. One more time surprise, without the oops. Was how cool oops. it would be if you're walking around and, you know. Not necessarily the exact same frequency when Johnny Depp was in the Pirates ride in, in Disneyland, but like if Chewbacca, you see Chewbacca just walk under the ride with you and he takes a seat and he's like actually doing a station in the ride. Like characters oh, shit, can I mean, do. That'd be fucking hell, incredible. Peter you know what, Peter, got nothing to do. That, that was motherfucker allegedly, can't even walk. Oh, he can't walk. Peter Mayhew can't walk anymore. That was allegedly what's going to happen. Really? We heard rumors when it first, yeah. So, so wait, real quick. What are the odds that Warwick Davis gets hired as a cast member? Are they going to pay him 50 That's cents? That's his uh, dream are they gonna pay him 50 at this point. Who are you kidding? To? Absolutely. <laughs> that guy will literally show up for anything. you got to yeah. fill that fucking pot of gold somehow, Scott. <laughs> yeah. he'll, he'll do anything for a peck and a shekel. I, he was in Leprechaun. That was the joke. It has nothing to do with him oh. being short. I know. Uh, hey, he, was he was in Willow. He was in Willow, and, and he will always... for. He would be Willow to me forever. I, I, it's not I'm, as funny I'm as an blanking. idiot abroad when he puts him in that fucking balloon <laughs> and makes him fly away in it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the episode or the, the series with Ricky Gervais that he was in That's or Stephen Merchant. No, it was it, it no, no, it's it was an idiot like a, with it was him like and a sh Carl Pilkington. No, no, no. There was a series about um Stephen Merchant being his agent. Oh no, I don't know what Oh, uh, I can't think oh, of Oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, what was the name of that show? I want to say it's like Little People or something like that. Uh, I can't remember, but it's... Well, Stephen Merchant Steven... must be a busy motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. But it's a show about Stephen Merchant uh, being his agent, and like Ricky Gervais is playing Ricky Gervais, and Warwick Davis plays Warwick Davis. It's it's hysterical. Dude, Warwick Davis would clean the rims of your car for like $3. <laughs> he would. <laughs> Wasn't it... Yeah, he uh, wouldn't even have to um, bend over. <laughs> Life's too that's short. Life's too short, that's I it, mean. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so th this one looks amazing. They've uh, Disney has teamed up with Nvidia to uh, to to make oh, this ride, yeah. and what essentially they've done is they have uh, eight high-end Quadro GPUs. You know how much those video cards cost? Oh. Tim looked it up. Eight thousand dollars a piece. Yeah. yeah. And they're powering five huge monitors. Forty thousand dollars per ride vehicle. And just video In And just video equipment. Here's what that tells me. This is not going to be Star Tours where it's just a it's just a, a video in front of you. This is going to be rendered in real time oh, yeah. off of a, a, a mm -hmm. massive CPU. So whatever you're doing, that's how you know what you do will dictate what happens because it's all being handled in real time. So you, you get you get a dip you will get a different ride experience every time you go on this. Well, you know what else it says? It says that this is upgradable and changeable. Yes, mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's. They'll just they'll release a patch, and then you'll have some server downtime, and then you got to wait forty minutes to log in. <laughs> or you'll get on the ride, and you'll see a blue screen of death. I hope. Oh God, you know how happy that that would be. This ride's equivalent Mikey. of the lights being on for Spaceship Earth. All right, I'm, 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 I'm about to. I'm about Space to Mountain, me. Yeah, I'm about to bust it's all the same to me. Here. Thank the Phoenicians. I'm about to bust Mikey's nut here. Are you ready? Uh, well, I got to pee, so be careful. Oh, hold on. Be care careful what you're getting skeeted with right now, Scott. <laughs> uh, Disney is not only teaming up with Nvidia for this, but Epic Games. Does, that, that really doesn't do anything for me. Why they made Fortnite? That kind of scares me a little bit. Yeah. Well, I know, but it does scare me. Storyline and gameplay have nothing to do with this ride. This ride this is, is going to entirely true. be about how good can it look running on these eight thousand dollar graphic cards. Um, 
and I think sixty frames per second. I have to disagree with you. I think storyline's going to be real damn right. important. But that, considering, but that's got nothing to do with yeah, epic. To tie epic. into the whole land and the hotel. What I'm saying is, epic has nothing to do with the storyline. Right. Epic being no, involved no. is entirely about the graphics that we're going to be seeing. So also, well, they're just yeah. using. It's just. It's not necessarily the graphic. It's. It's the. It's the engine that the system is running on. Yeah. Right. So and and how, how does example. it handle physics? And how does it handle right. the it's flight mechanics of, of the Millennium? Yeah. That. Right. That's. That's what I mean. And that's what Epic is. Uh, maybe, maybe that. Maybe that's why Fortnite is so fucking laggy and bullshit right now because they're busy trying that's to fly Millennium say, Falcon, yeah. chasing that damn <laughs> comet that's going to crash the Tilted Towers. Well, so, the, so the game of that, the thing of that is, though, is I'm sure they have a totally separate team working on between they do. Fortnite and they do. They're working. Well, it's a small they're working with. Still, so. They're going to be working with ILM and Lucasfilm for this. Um, they've actually been working with them in the past. So you guys all remember K2SO, right? From Rogue One. Alan Tudyk. Yes. Yep. Yep. That was that that rendering yes. was done. <laughs> that rendering was done using the Unreal Engine. So uh, uh, Epic and Unreal have already worked with Lucasfilm and, and ILM for this. But they, who's doing the artist work? Like, I'm sure was, it's ILM. Yeah, ILM will be doing the artwork, and uh, Epic will be doing the rendering with Unreal Engine. Well, rendering is something. I'm surprised they're even too. having to use um, Unreal and Epic. I'm, su- I'm surprised because ILM has their own in-house. But yeah, they but they got rid of it. They broke that up a long time ago. Their video game service is yeah. gone. Yeah, that's why we don't have that. Uh, what is it? That that battle front or whatever that game was that had the uh, storm, not the stormtroopers, like the clone troopers. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, that came out back in the old old days. Been, um, the one for Xbox. Lucas Arts ha- used yeah, to have that. A, that was a solid game. That was Lucas a good Arts game. had a had a full gaming division and. Disney said, uh oh, we're not playing this anymore and shut it down. And that probably all I gotta, all, the is, with all I gotta say is thank God they didn't go to EA with this shit. Yeah, well they knew better. Well, you have to understand EA. EA games sometimes use the Unreal Engine. That's that's the that's the thing that you're missing here. It's not like they're writing the Unreal Engine is sort of like a tool. FIFA uses Frostbite. Yeah, FIFA uses Frostbite. Yeah, that's that's or, dice. EA isn't it? EA uses Fry, uh, dice and Frostbite. Right, but but that's uh, you're looking at engines. It's a little bit different than actual game production. E- EA the is engine never... is makes the game work, and the physics work. But you're not looking at the total like storyline and everything else. That's not what the engine does. EA's never teamed up with Unreal. Unreal is completely separate. They've d- they've always done they've always right. done their own, or they used Frostbite now, or they use Frostbite right. But now. E- but I'm just saying like for them to go to EA for this doesn't make sense. It's not an industry standard. EA is more a console gaming where you have your Unreal Engine is more of a PC True. gaming system. Which is why it's going to so work looking, so much you're better. You're comparing apples and oranges right now. Hey, I'm excited. Yeah. Also, what I see coming from this, because you have the Unreal Engine uh, powering it, is you're probably going to get some stuff that gets released before this that is uh, on mobile devices or on like... Um, you know your VR headsets, like your HTC Vive or your Oculus, things like yep. that. You you'll see stuff coming out ahead of uh, this release using the Unreal Engine, probably to give Do you, you an idea. I, I would say so, just to give you. I mean, I could see a full 3D walkthrough. You, you know that you would slash strap you'll, your phone to your forehead. And, I can imagine. I can imagine they'll release a walkthrough of the Millennium Falcon. Like you why can would walk they do that? around through that. I don't think they'd do they that would at all. be shooting their own selves in the foot at that point. Why would they do? If that? it's just a well, walk, they don't want you to go to the park to see. No, it. I'm not saying like do the They're actual ride. To I'm to... saying why is go there into no the... 3D walkthrough right now? There's been multiple video games that have taken you to these parks. Multiple video games, at least from multiple systems, that have taken you to the Disney parks. There is still not a well, there's virtual been... walkthrough of anything. There's but... been two, and it's only been Disneyland. No, there's been a, f- there's been the two for Disneyland. There's been, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but I mean, but there's still no virtual for Disneyland either. Well, I mean that 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 Xbox uh, Connect one was pretty. It's not immersive. virtual. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. You walk no. yourself through Disneyland. Yeah, but I'm talking about 3D, true virtual, true virtual reality. It's not what we're. You can't compare true virtual reality to a 2D screen. 
Well, I mean, it's three. No, it's three D. I mean, if you play Disneyland Adventure, you have Connect, to wear a headset. No. Then it's not it's virtual not reality. Three D. I mean, it's You're pretty. Watching <coughs> on your TV screen is not. I have not seen pretty, pretty virtual virtual I have seen three hundred and sixty degree videos of like it's a small world from Disneyland during the Christmas overlay. It's difficult to do like full motion videos in 360 degree virtual reality because the file size is so ridiculously large. The technology for making an image 360 degrees, usually you have to shoot in like an 8K video resolution mm -hmm. and then truncate it down um, so it wraps around and still looks like a 720p output. You know, it's, it's, yeah, lots, lots of numbers and, and bullshit, I mean, but th that's why but you're not seeing like be, a full it's motion. It's not that difficult because at the same time you're having regular movie houses doing this now. Officially, like, you know, your XD movies and all this other stuff, all they're doing is making the film bigger. They're not actually filmed a lot of the times for XD. It's a dying thing. Your actual IMAX now is a digitally processed image to make it bigger. Yeah. That's Unless true. it's actually shot filmed on, on that shot 70 on millimeter, seventy millimeter film, right? Which is very rare now. It's all digitally processed, so it it's capable and the technology is out there, and it's just it, it's doable. If for somebody like Disney, who has the horsepower behind it, it's doable. Wasn't but they're going to be Jedi? shooting themselves in the foot foot to sit there and release that first. This they could have done it with Pandora. I'm not saying walk through the galaxy's edge. I'm saying do a walk through of the Millennium Falcon where you can like go walk yeah. through the ship and just we like could check have it that out. already. They already what? have Star Trek Bridge. They have um, for PlayStation as a VR game. But you can't walk through it. You're stuck in a seat. Well, you're, it's not the Enterprise anyway. Right. So, no. But I mean, the HTC Vive is doing some interesting things with their walking, moving platforms now. Do you think that this attraction of the Millennium Falcon is actually going to have you walk through the full-size interior? No. Okay. Well, so, there will be so that, that, that doesn't lead uh, credence built, to the... No, no. Uh, uh, listen, they have built corridors that look just like the Millennium Falcon. Well, sure, yeah, yeah, corridors. Gonna but you're not going to yes. go... It's not going to be a full size. Like you're not going to have no, access no, to go no, anywhere, no. which is why a walkthrough might work because you, it's the whole thing. No, it's but going to be just... corridors where you look like you're walking into the Millennium Falcon and you're actually. Here, just going but into then the at that point, how do you match that up with your attraction? What do you mean? How, where's the tie in there? Can I see it being something totally separate? Yes. Yeah. But <clears> I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It'd be, it'd, have... it'd be totally separate just for promotional purposes. Yeah, pro yeah, you promo the you, you know, can you, you do a commercial. It's a bad promo because it's not an experience you can have. Yeah, but it says, you know, come visit, come finish the adventure at Disney's Galaxy's Edge. But if I just walk through all of the uh, I I love the idea, but if I just walk through this Oh, you're not going to And then I get, get there and ride. I can't walk through it. <laughs> you're not going to give a shit. Trust me. It's I'm not but You're gonna be nerding out, man. A fifteen-year-old might. Be nerding a ten-year-old might. Amazing. Like I, I don't think they'd waste the time. And at the end of the day, the other question is, virtual reality is almost DOA yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, look, this is going to be an amazing attraction. It really is. I, I think this. I, I dare to say this will be the, the flight of passage of Galaxy's Edge. This is going to be the headliner e-ticket attraction. Uh... Now they say. I don't know, if I I don't know about that. I don't know if I agree with that either. I think the other one's going to be better, personally. Uh, based on the ride vehicle that I've seen, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to have a Flight of Passage slash Navi River Journey situation here, where Flight of Passage Oh, is... no, no. It's not going to be that but, bad. But that's what I'm saying. I think you have two e-tickets, so they're going to be two totally separate experiences. I think yeah. one is going to be markedly... Markedly better than the other, and I think the Millennium Falcon is going to be better <laughs> than the other one. Yeah, all it's going to take, though, to ruin that attraction for you is getting stuck with a kid who doesn't want to participate, who doesn't want to play. Yeah, it, there's a lot that's going into this, and it sounds like it's going to rely on other people. I hope that you're able to at least, like, help out. I hope you're within a, enough of a reach to help out or, or direct right. them, and maybe that's the point, is to work together as a team. Right, but at the end of the day, if you're, like a three-person group and you're going in with 
five strangers who don't speak English. That's true. <laughs> Single rider is not your friend here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, but that's what I mean. It's like there's a lot of factors that are going to go into this that might make it a little weird. And I don't know how they're going to make it so individual at that point. Well, maybe maybe you'll be able to scan your magic band and be like, uh, well, obviously you're going to scan your magic band when you get in there. And they'll know, you know, the people, the cast members will know who fucked up the ride, who didn't, who did their job. Um, you know, it's not going to like send Rob- off a line when you scan it and it goes Brazilian And Robinson tournament. will be waiting at the exit. <laughs> So what happens when, when you get bullied at the end of this attraction by the rest <laughs> oh, of the uh, park goers because <laughs> well, you missed the, the other button? Thing. What happens and, if you're the one who sucks? You know? you know what? That's you know what, Mikey. That's life. So this, but the second attraction will put you on a star destroyer. So this is the first order resistance fight uh, attraction. Now this has been a lot of a lot more mystery. Except they kind of released a mock-up of the ride vehicle, which basically kind of looks like a six-seater, uh, or an, I'm sorry, an eight-seater like ride vehicle, almost like a, uh, a trackless ride system. Um, and this one will put you on a Star Destroyer at one point because we have seen renderings of that. And the ride will be partly involve a, it will partly involve a rescue that doesn't go as planned. So the only things we really know about this is the code name for this attraction is Alcatraz. So it's basically going to be a rescue attempt to board a, a board a Star Destroyer. You said that, it, that that's the code name. That's Disney's code name for the attraction. Disney's yeah. working okay. Title you had me for a second. I was thinking. I was thinking. Okay, if the ride itself is using the word out if this thing comes out it has alcatraz in the name it's gonna suck me right out it, of it will not well you see but here's it the won't. game with this disney is king of misdirection i mean yes we could be all oh it's codename alcatraz it's called name it doesn't mean anything yeah it's a code name but i do think I, it's going to be a breaking out you're you're fighting your way out of a star destroyer i think i think it's a rescue attempt and then you have to get yourself out of that Star Destroyer and onto the 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 Resistance transport. Right. I think this is. I think you're going to be basically Rose and Finn, and you have to infiltrate a Star Destroyer. Oh, you're going undercover man. as Resistance. You're or you're going undercover as First Order, and you have to help the Resistance here. We'll see. I don't know what this is going to be yet. I don't. Yeah, they've been very secretive about this one. As very. A, I think it's a story. I think it's a very story-driven ride, and where they're, that's why they're playing it so c- closely to the chest. The only thing this we is do another know, one I will never watch until I experience. Yeah. yeah. The only thing we do know is is the <coughs> ride vehicle is called a first order <coughs> fleet transport, and basically it's powered by an astromech droid in, uh, in the front, and then there's eight seats behind you that transports your troop. So I think you're. I, I think this is basically. A rescue mission where you pose as stormtroopers and uh, rescue the princess in cell block D. No, I don't think so. Not, not obviously, not that because that's, that's the you know, idea of it. Movies, yeah. But that's the idea. Mm. I think you have to rescue someone and get out of the star destroyer and get onto the ship, and maybe you make it, and some some make it, maybe some don't. Maybe because well, we, is we've there been an told, interactive element to this? We've been told that there is a track, there is there is an interactive element to each of these rides, and your decisions will influence how you're perceived in the in the galaxy's edge. So maybe maybe there's some consequence to this. I just I, I guess what kind I of consequence happens when there's you know eight people on a on a vehicle and. I mean, it's, you can't really choose your own storyline with eight different people. That's that's my question. Uh, Horizons did. I wouldn't know. No, Horizons did not. Horizons did a vote, and whoever whoever had the highest votes, whatever section well, had the you, highest there was votes, that's what you got. Yeah, but that's going to take no, you out of whatever the ride is if you have to start raising your damn hand or pushing a button to pick what you do next, you know? I, well, I, uh, no. Now I did see uh, in my in my kind of like brief research for this, I did see some some shots that someone took of a panel that is supposed to be on this, and there's buttons on the panel. So maybe there is, and it clearly looks like Imperial technology or First Order technology rather than uh, part of the Millennium Falcon. So maybe there well, are. Buttons how do you that know you you're push. not on the other side of this? How do you know you're not trying to chase down? Oh, you could be. I mean, we we don't know, but I think that would be much more fun. But well, you're just, you just want to be a bad guy. 
Well, yeah, because we already got a we already got a good guy ride. We need, yeah. we need a bad guy ride. Everybody wants to be the bad guys in Star Wars. Sometimes I don't care what anybody says. I always come to the dark side. Star Wars. See, so oh, see, I always like the Jedi. I wish. I always right. wanted to be a Jedi. We know. Okay. Fucking Jedi, Steve no love, no sex. I'll pass. Thank you. See, I, w I want to be the son that Darth Vader never had. <laughs> Wait, what? He's a you cyborg a, baby. <laughs> you mean a whiny little bitch? No, I want to be the one. I don't he like loved. sand. <laughs> it gets everywhere. But I wanted to go to Tashi Station and pick up power converters with my friends. Uh, I don't like sand either. I'm good with sand, really. I'm okay with sand. I like it on paper. It's fine. I like it near the beach. I like it when it's entirely the beach. I like it with a witch. <laughs> it's Tim. <laughs> Dad joke of the day. <laughs> oh god. Not just not just uh, the men. <laughs> the women and the children too. Uh, all right, so we do know there will be two. There will be two restaurants. One will be a cantina, but not the cantina. Yeah, we all know what it's gonna be, though. I know. Well, it can't be the cantina because it's not on the right planet. Right, it's not on. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah on the, but I have a feeling it's gonna be markedly it, similar. Close, is it gonna be a close similarity? Do you think they will have the cantina music or just something no. similar to it? Oh, I think it's going. You're to gonna be have Rex as a DJ. No, you're gonna have Rex as a DJ, like Tim said. There's if, a DJ. That if they don't, work if they Captain don't Rex have Fingern Dan and the Modal Nodes, I'm going to be disappointed. They're not gonna have. What them. about the band from fucking Jabba's Palace? Yeah. What about Sunny Eclipse? That fucking no. frog monster <laughs> bitch. No one wants <laughs> part of that. <laughs> bring yeah, bring and, Sunny back. And the Space Angels. And the Space Angels. <laughs> no, Fresh from no. Zoo Zoo York. On the planet. Yeah, so we know you, yeah. we know you'll be able to get blue milk there. Um, the other thing that has been talked a lot about is there will be a fine dining restaurant on the in the land. Oh, um, Coruscant. Twilight servers, you know. I'm interested to see how cast members have to dress up. Are there going to be cast members that serve you as Twilights? I doubt it. I mean, that's a lot of makeup for a cast member. That's, that's what I'm saying. There should be a server in a hot time. kitchen going to run food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm mean, I can't sweaty just that. thinking about it. They would probably uh, have... Uh, slave layer costumes. Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, do that. That's, All right. That's not happening. That's my vote. <laughs> I, I hear... Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. You know what, Trent? Save that for our uh, How to Adult Star Wars Land episode. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, uh, so yeah, there will be two quick. There will be a, a quick service cantina where you can get probably food and drinks, um, and then there will be a fine dining restaurant or a signature dining restaurant that will be booked 180 days out every single fucking time for the next decade. I will get it. Hey, if I got a ticket when freaking, if I got a spot when freaking, um, whatever the hell, freaking be our guest, be our guest opened the year it opened. I will get a spot. Oh for this yeah, year no, restaurant. I'm definitely gonna have to go here. Definitely Do you think the food, the names of the food, will be themed as though you're on a different planet? I mean, obviously it's chicken, but what the hell are they going to call the chicken dish? No, there's definitely going to be another octopus dish. Breast porgs. of Tauntaun? <laughs> no, porgs. Porgs? Yeah. yeah, porg wings. Porg wings. <laughs> I just... That... Well, the... the um... the Tenderloin. For the Disney, uh, for the Star Wars Gal uh, Galactic Knights, whatever, they do have a pork dish. Yeah, they do. So, I'm just saying. Does it look up? Does it look up at you with those big, it's big eyes? Of course, it's. Oh, I'm just saying. You know, tauntaun wing or uh, pork wings, tauntaun filet of tauntaun. Get get some uh, bantha te tauntaun bantha ribs. tenderloin. Yeah, I think, and I thought but they smelled bad on the that outside. Would so take me out of that experience. Wookie nuggets. <laughs> I don't think they'll be like that. That can mean something totally different. <laughs> With a cream no, sauce. No, it's Rusty. Yeah, I told, no, I told you Chewie was neutered. <laughs> uh, no, and even nuggets. You, can, you have to be careful with that word. No, they're Kashyyyk <laughs> Yeah, they're Kashyyyk oysters. <laughs> they're Kashyyyk oysters. So, we, so, it, so yeah, they'll they'll have those two restaurants. I think they'll be good. I mean, I, I will be excited to eat at both of them, for sure. 
I want a mouse droid to deliver my meal. That's what I want. <laughs> I wouldn't mind an all droid sort of like serving stuff. It's doable. You know, I could see the cantina having Triton's little uh, train track conveyor belt thing delivering. I could see that happening in the cantina here. Because it, it would be kind of cyberpunky. What I think we will have is, have you guys seen the videos of the cruise ships that have like the cyborg arm that makes your drinks for you? Yes. I think we yeah. will have something like that. I think we will have a droid making drinks. I don't think so. I don't think that it for the amount of people that they're going to have to serve. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna play up the character yeah. element of this. But like, if it's a droid, speaking, no tips. Sp- <laughs> this, this is true. Speaking of characters Droids are people too. Speaking of characters, uh you will be able to encounter many familiar faces inside Galaxy's Edge. BB eight will be there, Chewbacca will be there, members of the First Order. Um as Tim said earlier, I th- or Tim or Tim or Adam, I think, said this, but Rex will be the DJ of the cantina. So he'll be spinning the one-twos. Do we think Phasma will be here still? I mean... No. But you know what? Yeah. If you're going to give me BB-8, give me BB-8. Bef- Don't no, give me BB-8 bef- sitting on a crate that'll only well, move his head. Well, she was supposed to be dead after The Force Awakens, too. All I'm saying this is, is... No, no, this is all set before Force Awakens. Remember. Oh, God. Phasma will be there. So Phasma's not Phasma yet. No. no she, she's Lieutenant Phasma. She'll have a meet and greet, but I don't think she'll yeah. be roaming the streets. So there, uh, there also will be shops, of course, because you know what is a what is a Disney park without merchandise? Well, and it takes place on a trader planet, so it would have to have shops. So it kind of makes Obviously. sense. This is the best part. Oh, and the toy me. shop will be run by a toy Darian. Yeah. How? That's what it says. One stall will be overseen by a toy Darian. Oh, a so, stall. And you're not... Yeah, one stall. It's you have be, to be so, really careful with so, the wording when Disney uses that kind think, of wording. Think of this as... This is going to be an open-air marketplace of, like, Istanbul or, or Morocco, Marrakesh. They went... Imagineers went there, and they wanted to they wanted to recreate this, like, open-air market so they'll have individual stalls. So if you've ever been to, like, arcades in Paris where they have these open-air markets, they will have... Each stall will have a proprietor, and one of them will be an animatronic Tordarian. That you probably can't buy anything from. Well, you'll be able to interact with them, and there'll be someone like selling you shit at the as the front end of it. They prefer junk, Scott, not shit. Sorry, <laughs> junk traders. <laughs> so damn it. Well, Scott. I find it funny that you're not going to be able to buy any actual like Galaxy's Edge merchandise, like T-shirts and shit, in Galaxy's Edge. Well, you can already buy you have them to go outside of that section of the park. I'm pretty to buy sure you stuff. can already buy Galaxy's Edge stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but it won't be you sold can. in that section. It won't be sold in it's immersion Correct. breaking. Yeah, it's kind of the whole yeah. avatar. Well, no, what? No, they sell, they sell the Pandora they shit in, yeah. in Pandora. Well, you, well, they do because if you the story of Pandora is that there's a it's a conservation uh, project. Yeah, it's a tourist. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a tourist. Yeah, I, I got you. It's, well, yeah, you'll you'll find you might find Batu stuff there, but you won't find it. It won't say Star Wars Galaxy. It might say like visit Batu or something like that. It, yeah. Probably. Well, I went to Batu and all I got was a stupid. T- <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> I'm sure have they'll have a I'm shirt with it. DJ Rex on it. Well, they already have a hat. Batu, they have a, Batu they Batu have a shirt ears. with DJ Rex on it. We have they, you can buy that in the Disney parks right now. You can buy it on the Disney Disney Shop website too. It says Galaxy's Edge landing 2019. Well, they are committed. They're already giving you a date. Oh yeah. I mean, like, I mean, they're printing it on on a word. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that 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 always worked out for them real well. Oh yeah, test constantly. Track. I'm looking mm-hmm. at you, test track. Looking at most of the things in Epcot. <laughs> yeah, we're just looking at you, Epcot. <laughs> hey, Frozen opened on time. Where's my Spain? But the Frozen was just like a <coughs> Frozen a, was an a overlay. Coat of paint. Yeah, it's got fucking some of the most yeah. groundbreaking animatronics in the parks. And does it? It's a snowman that no, follows your pretty... fucking boat and talks to you. Uh, but didn't? Uh... Yeah, I know where you guys are going. Good let let let. Let him have the magic, guys, okay? Don't spoil it for him. Let him think it's the same animatronic from the beginning to the end. I'm talking about the first scene where you see him, where Sven is no, sitting there does. at the end. He follows you. That's just a pre-programmed sequence. Right, I get it. It's still incredible. The Easter Bunny's not real. That's just a guy <laughs> like, in a costume. Have you been on the Frozen ride? 
I never have. No. Then why the fuck are you even talking about oh, it? Well, then you can't you go. Can. <laughs> it, it does have some pretty advanced animatronics. Yeah, well, those are all um, 2.0s, yeah, aren't all they? And, and <laughs> oh, I love my job. They're, they're the seven dwarfs. Like yeah. Buzz Lightyear. No, no Buzz Lightyear's no, not 2.0. No, Buzz Lightyear is still... No, I'm thinking of when we uh, fixed Toy Story land. Mm. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. My Buzz Lightyear. Um, so yeah, there's uh there is merchandise already out there. If you go to the Disney Parks uh, shopping app, you can find it there. It's it's just basic T-shirts with Star Wars on it. So um, obviously, I think, downtown Disney. What's that? The thing in downtown Disney. Oh, the yeah. virtual reality Star? thing. Yeah, the the uh, what's it called? Secrets of the Empire at the Void. That thing. The virtual reality thing. That's what I call it. Yeah, I don't well, remember I the store. It was a pop. It was a pop up thing. No, I think. No, it's, it's not. No, no, it's still no, there. No, no, it's, no, it's not pop up. It's, it's permanent. I, I yeah. will say, every time I've watched like somebody's uh, video review of it, almost everybody has had problems when they go through it the first time. So they get to go back and go through it a second time, and they're like, "Oh, it was amazing!" But the first time, because. I, I, I would bet that much like what's going to be um, on the Millennium Falcon ride, this thing probably also runs through some type of uh, a, 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 a live rendering while you're going through it, and, and it, it locks up on people and, and stuff like that. It looks amazing, though, from what I've seen. I mean, you're, you're actually walking through the actual uh, building or, or, or corridors or ship or whatever you're going through. Um, and it's just overlaying it in VR. So if you reach out and touch a panel, the panel is there in real life and you're really interacting with it. But what you see, you know, in real life, it's probably all painted gray. But what you see, you know, is is, is uh, done up in the uh, with with the VR software. Now, I've heard so, it, incredible things about this. Like, you know, if you sit down, the bench is really there. Mm -hmm. You know, you can pick up a blaster and throw it to your friends and they can catch it. And it's... Oh no! This oh no, no! no. I, haven't I haven't heard about that oh, shit. Yes, like you can pick up in the May, blaster, and throw it. They can catch it. You know, you can, you can hand we... them out. I mean, it's I've heard. So should crazy. we do this in November? Oh yeah! I want to have a couple of drinks at Jock Lindsay's first. I think it's only no, three. No, 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 I think no. it's either. I need to do this sober <laughs> first. Three, it's three or four people though. It can only be four, I think. Green yeah. teas for everybody, oh, and you like have to actually make a reservation for it. If I'm not, yeah. But the cool thing is, it's only like thirty-five bucks. And everybody gets quiet. you get you get this. Well, they put <laughs> this huge much. pack on you, which is basically they strap a, a a computer to your back that runs the VR headset and everything else you're handling, and it's and then the, every room you go into has all these sensors that track you in 3D space. Right. So if you look at, I'm gonna have to do this. Do what, Adam? Oh, we're doing it in May. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, th Hands. when you guys do it, definitely report back because. I mean, I, I'm interested. Are, Trenton, are you doing it in April? Well, later this month? We're going to Disney Springs on that Friday, so. Awesome. See if we can make a reservation for it. Yeah, me. Yeah, that would be four of us. That would, that would work out. I'm going to. We're doing that, and I'm doing Art of Shaving. Huh. He, You're actually going to get no, your beard shaved? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, gonna give it a he's going to get it, like, shaped and some coconut oil and some other bullshit to put in it. Make it not look so much like a Amish man. Homeless it Amish doesn't person. look bad. Uh, it would look better <laughs> if you weren't so pale. <laughs> Let's put it this way: you'd probably fit in with the Robinsons. You guys are just jealous. No, I I'm can grow jealous. a beard like, like that. Beard. I just won't. <laughs> All right, my Scott, you're just jealous. <laughs> Me? Yeah, no. we, we've seen no. your beard, Scott. I, I don't. I don't think I would look good with a beard. There's a reason my son calls you no beard. I, I wouldn't. Look good with a beard. <laughs> I don't think I would look good with a beard. I don't think I would look good with a million dollars either, Scott. Right now, my 13 year old has more. No, hair I, on his face, I, Scott. I don't think my face is built for a beard. I just don't. I've got a pretty face. Yeah, you. Oh, I, you think I, I, think it's the, I think it's the slim, feminine features. Most women don't look good with beards either, Scott. So. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, That's got to yeah. stay in. How's that hairline coming there, buddy? It's real <laughs> shitty, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're making fun of, like, two-thirds of the show. So. That's the lowest common. Yeah, I am really, follically just, challenged as well. I see so. Adam rubbing his. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie always points mine out to everybody. 
You know, oh yeah, he used to. He gets so stressed out sometimes. He grabs it and just pulls it straight up, and he's just but, he's got this island going on. I'm like, no, woman, it's a peninsula. I do not have an island. It's an archipelago. Yeah. Get the all, fuck out of here, <laughs> Mikey. All you need to do is just step out in the sun for a little bit, and then you just look like you have a full head of hair. Burst into flames. Yeah, wow. Trenton's right. I, I, I got oh, I got okay. a sunburn in 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 35 degree rainy weather. <laughs> Taking like up donations for Make a like Wish last week. into a church. We both yeah. burst into flames. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, but uh, but there there is a there is a way you can already check out what Star Wars Galaxy Edge looks like. If you do, if you are in Hollywood Studios, go over to the Walt Disney Presents exhibit and you can see a model of the uh, of the land. It, it looks really cool. It's gonna be also from what I understand that attraction currently has one man stream again oh does it for right now until they have another movie oh, to put hang on. on this this goes back to last week when we had a big ass argument about one man dream one man stream didn't we yeah it's currently showing it there it's currently showing again well good so, because everybody likes that yeah i do i like it i do like I can't tell you how many times I've gone to see that. Because I Walt Disney, How many times? Walt Disney prevents he can't. Shit that... He literally can't tell can't, you how many times. He can't tell because he's never seen it. <laughs> well, who's never seen it? Uh, Mikey's never seen One Man's Dream. Mikey's never seen it. It's important to see it if you're a Disney. Yeah, it's it, worth it's seeing. It, yeah. It's important to see it for the history. <laughs> I agree. It is definitely better than Walt Disney presents a bunch of shit he didn't know about. <laughs> Well, Disney presents a bunch of shit that happened after yeah. he died. And now um, here's something new. Here's Moana, 45 years after I've been dead. And it wasn't my idea anyway. <laughs> More than that. Hey, you never know how far he'll go. Uh, that's true. So, so you definitely uh, go check it out if it's there. Uh, who knows if it's there right now, but it's been there for the last few weeks, and then all of a sudden they're back to one man's room. Maybe it's over at the uh, spaceport now. Launch port. Launch pad? Launch bay. Space Launch bay. bay. Launch Space <laughs> bay. Launch bay. Bayport? Space dam. <laughs> Airport. I don't, I don't think it's there, but there are two Kylo Rens. Don't space yeah, water. there they are, and that just pisses me off. We waited to meet oh, the me first too. one, and then we're like, oh, yeah, where's the DVC level? It's over here. Okay, cool. Who, who, do, who is that back there? It's Kylo Ren. We said, nope. Well, that's like the Visa Chase card. It's like, oh, look, who's the... Well, that's oh, what okay. he's talking about. I thought you said something about DVC. He did say DVC. He misspoke. I, well, he Disney... They don't have a yeah. DVC. It, it, it's Disney Visa card. Disney Which is Chase. fucking horseshit because Darth Vader's been there and they have Darth Vader's, but he's never there. Yes. It's like, oh, I can meet Kylo Ren He here? was there the day before we got online to do it. When we got online to do it, it's fucking yeah, Kylo Ren. Rage. Also, yeah. they took the fucking Jawas out. I know yeah, that yes. was so cool. Ethan meeting the Jawas was so awesome. Like they like they they had so much fun with them. They danced for them to the to the Cantina song that was playing overhead. They uh, that was that was the best. They I can't believe awesome. they took them out. It's fucking. It makes me legit butt hurt. That is that is bullshit. Actually, you got a soft spot for the Jawas. Yeah, right in my butt. You butt hurt. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. I was just waiting. These aren't the roids you're looking for. <laughs> Trent wants to trade a Jawa for a dildo. Whatever, man. The it was more plug. like preparation age. Cucumber? I don't give a fuck. Space cucumber? <laughs> uh, so, so on some other news. Uh, Star Wars Galactic Knights is returning May 27th. Uh, there's there's going to be some... Yeah, there's going to be some awesome food, some drinks there. Uh, some of some of the new the new stuff for this year is a uh, is it's an ins inspirational dish from um, Trenton's favorite movie, The Phantom Menace. There are two gazpacho dishes. It's a dueling gazpacho dish, featuring a spicy red pepper and a cu cool cucumber melon variant, uh, and they kind of resemble the the lightsabers of Qui Gon Jinn and uh, Darth Maul. I will not be partaking. It looks good though. I'm not allowed. What? Yeah, that, there's that whole allergic reaction to melon that oh, might that's right. be yeah, dangerous yeah, yeah, for yeah. me. Well, we'll be there for Galactic Night, so there's that. Uh, they have a three cheese pasta containing a mix of meatball, beef, and uh, mixed meatball, beef, and lamb. That sounds good. That sounds very good. 
I like pasties and lambs. Yeah. I like lamb. It actually looks really good. The food looks good. I like good. the silence of the lamb, too. This has got lamb balls in it, from what Scott said. And cheese. Uh, they're, bringing ba they're bringing back the... Uh, the uh, lamb pork, oysters? The, the pork leg. Lamb fries. Uh, the pork leg will be there, and then they... Uh, a surf and turf dish, which this sounds really good, Tim. You might like this. Well, you might like half of it. Uh, a lemon diver scallop with a pork belly. The surf. Yeah. The surf is the diver scallop. The turf is the pork belly. It looks pretty good. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, so Star Wars Galactic, Night Galactic Nights will start on uh, Mar uh, May 27th. Food looks good, man. I, I will say. Food looks pretty damn good. I don't think the food ever looks good at those parties. I kind of agree with that. I don't know. Something it's, looks good. It looks good in the preview. It's a lot of lipstick. Yeah, well, yeah. The fish and chips looks pretty good. It's fish and chips! Yeah, I mean, that's not like brain surgery. Uh, it's a lot harder than you think. Mm-hmm. Is it really? Yeah. I mean, getting that batter know. right. Getting the batter right and then getting it fried and not having it be soggy and shitty later. See, yep. that's... I picture it being soggy because if they're Oh, at this party, it it's going to be fucking soggy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but that's what I mean. It's not going to be good quality. That's, you might as well just throw a French fry, uh, fish stick in a deep fry. Although, wasn't Wozni, up. Josh Wozni, just there the other day, and he said he liked it. It was a galactic. Or not that it was a galactic night, so it was a galactic spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. But that's... Same know. idea, right? So galactic this, this night one... sponsored by Gortons. Yeah. Uh, so Trust this one, this part interests me. Uh, they're Sorry. gonna have a they're gonna have a wine flight from the Skywalker Ranch wines. Uh, I haven't liked one of them yet. The the Pinot Noir, the Somita Pinot Noir, wins a ton of awards. It's apparently really good, and they make it in a it. they make two varieties of it: a Pinot Noir and a Pinot Noir Rosé, which is supposed to be really good as well. I don't like rosés. Really oh, like Disney rose. likes some rosé right now. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's because hipsters rose. like rosé. If you've ever had, like... Oh, we know a guy that likes Yeah, rose. we're kind of so pioneers. Our neighbor brought us a bottle of, of Pinot Noir rosé wine from France, and it was actually really good. I don't really like rosé wine, but this was really good. It didn't have that, like, sweet, sugary flavor. Pretty I don't like good. sweet wines. It's not. That's why I like dry wines. It's not, it wasn't. Uh, but uh, the menu is over at the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge and Baseline Tap House. So those will be there. Um, the Baseline Tap House will have the Chili Octopus, the Eclair Trio, Ribeye Steak Puff, ve uh, Vegan Curry. No, thank you. The C3PO Charcuterie, the Dueling Gazpacho, and the Skywalker Wines. The Skywalker Wines. So do we get do we get hipster versions of John Wayne? That's what I was going <laughs> to ask. Oh, That's exactly it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the, the acoustic collection of John Williams. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> the Hollywood Brown Derby will have the, the surf and turf, the tofu and noodle salad, eclair trio, shrimp and chorizo skewers, wagyu beef sliders, the charcuterie, and then also the Skywalker one. So, um, did you say tofu? The... Yes. Why, yes. Did, why did they get? Why did they get to throw that shit in there? Vegetarians don't even like fucking tofu, dude. Hey, listen, well, it's, this is like low carb. It should be your thing right now, man. It's your bag, baby. Tofu's, it's a tofu tofu's and noodle salad. Carb. I wouldn't know. I've never eaten it before. Too, is right? tofu carbs? I don't think tofu sure. has it's carbs. A it's a vegetable. It's a bean. It, is butter it's, a carb? This was protein. Right, but it's a starchy. It's, it's a starchy bean. You know what? It's Just butter. eat them. Just eat them and be happy. But if you do want to, if you do want to to do this, you need to book a you need to book a reservation. Uh, you have to call 407 WW Dine. That's 407 939 3463. You have to book a reservation for these. Uh, they are they do sell out. From 7 p.m. to midnight, they do sell out. Trust me. Plenty of nerds go. There's actually not many carbs in tofu, no. You're right. Oh. See? Ah, it's curd. Look at that. Yeah. like So it's you could make like tofu surprising. poutine. Tofu teen. <laughs> 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 <coughs> Tof oh God, tofu team, but without the French fries, it would have to be like sweet potato fries that are low carbs, or That's no, it would be cauliflower awesome. fries. It's cauliflower fries. fries. No, I, I like it. I like With, it because apparently like them crazy hipsters think you can make everything out of cauliflower, pizza crust, yes. hamburger buns, rice, really mashed can. potatoes, rice. I oh, listen, we did uh, mashed cauliflower. It's and decent. It you know what? It's yeah. not though. It's not a potato. It, that's for sure. No. You Andrew can definitely made, tell um, it's not a potato. Andrew made fried rice. 
using cauliflower rice or rice cauliflower. It's a, I kind of liked it. You know what? It's yeah, not. It's not good. rice. But, but, but Scott, you're the bougie hipster of the group. I am not a hipster. Okay, but you're bougie, so that counts. <laughs> just... I, 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 you know what's funny your, is I'm your really hairstyle happy. is pseudo hipster, Scott. Yeah, it is. It may be, but I'm definitely not hipster. Hipsters I mean, don't watch motocross. You. Mm, yeah, in no. ten years they do. You were just hipper than them at the time. Because <laughs> normal people don't watch, watch that shit. I can to tell you. Down. Man, I was watching. Uh, I was watching motocross this morning, and uh, they decided to forego New York for Seattle, an outdoor stadium in Seattle in April. It was the muddiest track I have ever seen. Like bikes were Hell getting stuck yeah. standing up. It was amazing, and also horrible. Do you own a fox hat? Uh, a yes. no. I own a Troy Lee Designs hat, though. You, yeah, I own a Troy I, Lee you hat. have the shirt on. Yeah, no, you need the shirt on. you need a fox motocross hat. I don't really like anyone that. Races so whenever fox, when, when you when you say to to Andrea, I'm running down uh, to the store real quick. She can say, "Where the fox at?" Wow, uh, boy, Oops. that no. That took a really long time yeah. to get there. Yeah, I don't, I don't really that remember that the way the guy off. told the joke on TV, and but it had something to do with London Underground. What the fox says. That was like a that was like a two week safari to see a giraffe. Well, I mean, it's giraffe. Yeah, it's a giraffe. Well, I got two weeks safari to see a meerkat. <laughs> to see Scott. Uh, you meerkat. could you 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 can felch a meerkat Jeez. if you try hard enough. All right, so uh, okay. so let's uh, on that, yeah, on that uh, note, let's wrap this up. So on a couple a couple of rapid fire things, I wanted to ask you guys. Pew pew pew. Uh, <laughs> pew pew pew. Yeah. Trenton, yeah. who is your favorite Star Wars character? If you could meet anyone at Galaxy's Edge in 2019, who would you pick? You know, I have a Darth Vader tattoo, right? Yeah, but I've already oh, met Darth shit. Vader. That doesn't count. I haven't met Darth Vader. <gasps> You underprivileged child. So I would say Darth Vader. So w without going with the softball of Darth Vader, um, I don't know if it's possible, but Grievous is definitely my second favorite villain. That would be cool. But I, it would be very hard for them to pull off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Grievous, Tim, what about you? Grievous is awesome. Well, like Trenton said, the softball for Darth Vader. I, I would love to meet Darth Vader because we got fucked um, with the chase visa. Not meeting him, but I was gonna say Ahsoka Katana. Ahsoka Katana. Ash, took mine. I I met her one time. She was uh, she was collecting cans for the Cardinal Wives. It's actually Ashley Eckstein. Her oh, husband no. is David Eckstein. He used to play for the Cardinals. The Cardinals. You remember that cricket noise? Yeah. Yeah. That was the time. That was the time. <laughs> <to ask. laughs> She, uh, honestly, Ashley Eckstein is an amazing person to add to the Star Wars universe. She does so much with the My Universe thing for, for girls. But that's what Ahsoka is about. I know. Really, it's, when you think she's, about it. she's amazing. She, she dives right into the Star Wars. She loves it. She is a fan first and an actor second. So, Tim, or uh, Adam, what about you? Well, Tim's still mine because I... Love Ahsoka, I would want her to have her own film. I think I've discussed this already. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I would actually ha like to actually have an actual meet and greet with Rey. If they did it correctly. I don't see why they can't. They have her on that stage show, right? It, it's it's the vocal inflection. It, it It's yeah. very difficult. It's the same problem that you're going to have with when everybody meets Star-Lord. When everybody meets the actual face characters that are not quite there. Like, it's not like they're meeting Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow is a character. Caricature, yeah. Yeah. You of could, himself, yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah. well, himself, Where, and, himself as, and Mick Jagger, or Keith Richards. Right. Where you meet some of these other characters, and you want them to look a certain way, and they don't... It, it, it really takes you out of the experience. You should just get Mikey. one of Daisy Ridley's sisters. There you go. Mikey, what about you? <clears throat> You know, at my core, I want to say, like, K2SO, but I think it's just because of Alan Tudyk. And there's no <laughs> way you can meet the actual droid because, you know, the physical limitations of the human body. 
not gonna happen. Uh, on the other hand, it's like, damn it, why, why not like a, uh, I don't know if a Yoda meet and greet would be worth a damn either. Because it'd just be a lot, I mean, it'd be, it'd be a mask and someone of a, of a very uh, diminutive stature. Warwick Davis. Or Scott. <laughs> <laughs> we can put him in. I think Yoda, Yoda's smaller than Warwick Davis. You know. It would have to be an animatronic. I know, uh, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like that either. So, uh, God. Really, and this is going to be so unpopular. God. But I would probably get a kick out of some type of a pod racing scenario and meeting like Sebulba. What? Because that would be an easy be one to do as well. I mean, yeah, yeah, Sebulba. It, it would be, okay, okay, Jar Jar. Oh my God, you. no, you no. You're still trying to pick for, saving. No, Jar -Jar I'm, I'm yes. saving. I'm saying for, for just for me, just like for the whole gimmick side of it, because I've already done the that the, would be the, Kylo the character or... that would have to have the most security <coughs> ever. Oh my God, I've no, I've, no. I've met I've no. met the 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 the, the Chewbacca, Um, I don't know. I, a Han Solo meet and greet would not work. A no. Princess Leia meet and greet would never work. A uh, Luke Skywalker. No, and and what is this? Wouldn't. What about? What do you guys think about this rumor that's going around about Meryl Streep? No, Street? it's a lie. I don't no, see it. Happening. I thought it was already. If if determined it was already that that was debunked, if it is, I, if it yeah, is, you can't have anybody take over that role. I'm just kill not her off. Get my opinion because I want to make everybody's little feelings hurt. <laughs> no, I just. I don't think you would. I already heard it was it was discredited. Yeah, it was just a fan a fan driven. Theory. Yeah, but Meryl Streep. Don't, don't start. No. All I see with Meryl oh, Streep is death becomes her. Yep. No, I totally see that too. No, she was in she was or in the, the bridges of Madison County with Clint Eastwood. She her. she showed them Streep titties in that movie. No, I didn't see that movie either. I do not like her. But nobody can be Princess Leia but Carrie Fisher. Yeah. She gone. Yeah, she's gone. And look, unfortunately, I I think they'll 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 just explain it away. I, I don't think they'll do it any kind of like... Well, the issue was the next episode was going to be heavily Leia-centric. It was going to be her swan song. Like, every character... For the last three movies, you can already see where this was going. Right. Was yeah. Every main character was getting their last and then get killed off. Luke didn't so... get killed off. He just decided, I'm done with this shit. And he, like vaporized himself yeah but that's what i'm saying i'm just saying it was there himself. each each one was a swan song it was the end of their story so yeah. the next one would have made sense to be leia's odds 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 that uh what are the odds that jj abrams brings back luke as a force ghost in a solar flare yep <laughs> Adam was so excited about that. Did y'all see his face? He was. He was. Right Holy shit! I think Luke will be with Obi Wan and Yoda. In uh, some yeah, capacity. I mean JJ JJ Abrams has no real creativity, so yeah. Obi Wan, Yoda, and fucking Qui -Gon. um, no, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be JJ Abrams. It's gonna be JJ Abrams fucking Darth Vader funeral pyre scene. Yeah. Okay, the yeah, problem probably. I have with this is that J.J. Abrams does never, doesn't really close stories well. Have opinion. you seen Lost? Nope. Yeah, that's my problem. I've seen Lost and I've seen Alias. Mikey, I saw the first they episode both the and I said, they're all in purgatory. And I didn't watch another one after that. And then like seven years later, they're in purgatory. Because they swore that they weren't going to do that. And then they turned around and did that. Yeah, he's predictable. I don't like J.J. Abrams. I really don't. I have a. It's fine. He does have very good ideas, and I like his creative. But he never knows how to end anything. You might as well get M Night Shyamalan a ding dong. Oh no! To, to oh no! No no, no! Look, no! no! Look at Cloverfield. No, no. We don't know what the hell is going on with Cloverfield. Okay, so oh, so yeah, next question: If you guys could add a scene or add a planet to Star Tours, what are you adding? Uh, let's go with Mikey first. I want the Millennium Falcons flying through the freaking asteroids and that big ass critter jumps up and tries to eat it. The video worm? The, uh, the space penis? Yeah. The space <laughs> I want. I want, I want a little bit of that action, man. 
Yeah, Princess Leia's line, the, the ground is moist and soft. So basically, I, I want Galaxy's Edge <laughs> in Star Tours. Tim, what would you add? I don't know. Um, I, I want to see Dagobah. I want to see him go to see Yoda and Dagobah. Very cool. It's very foggy, though. Adam, what about you? I have a really unpopular opinion on this. I want them to close the attraction and give something else at this point. Yeah. Okay, Trent, how about you? <laughs> you want to stay married? <laughs> no, so, he wants to close uh, the attraction, Tim. That's what he said. So if you... I'm sorry. <laughs> it's old technology. What the and... fuck? <laughs> Let me finish. Oh, no. <laughs> it's an old transact. It's an old attraction. Give me something updated. Give me something new. That takes up a lot of square footage. Small worlds for a old theater technology, but that I'm not moves. That down. Damn, okay. yeah, you know I what? Let's think... burn Soren while we're at it. Yeah, fuck their carousel of progress, people mover. Fuck them. Ah, uh, yeah, no. That's going to be a very unpopular Well, new, new Soren, you can burn. You can get rid of new Soren, in my opinion. You can get rid of new Soren. New Soren you guys sucks. Love, don't even Soren. lie. We had to go, we had to leave the hotel to go do that shit. It's but at the end of the day, if it closed... And, and what did we do? We at, we had to ask to sit in the middle glider, because if you don't sit in the middle glider, that show is shit. It's absolute yeah. shit. I mean, up, yeah. the Eiffel Tower should but not Who curve. wants to fucking watch a nah, big well, fucking this, Eiffel Tower? We're, we're ignoring the fact that Adam just said we should close Star Tours. And I'm... No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Here's the game with this. How, how much further are we going to watch a movie in a movable... I love Star Tours. Yeah, I think it's time. I think it's time has come. I would much rather see something. Updated. I would also give me a flying in X-wing. Either get into if I was adding a scene to Star Tours, Scott, that's still there, Adam. Um, <laughs> it would either be the Starfighter battle at the beginning of Episode Three, or Kamino. Uh, when the droids are attacking Kamino. So for me. That is my favorite um, scene to play in Battlefront. Which is awesome. For me, the... But how much does that ride make sense now being outside of Galaxy's Edge? Thank you. Well, I think they could probably just move the entrance around. Wouldn't they be able to? No. No, I don't not, think so. It's not even close to the entrance. It'll be interesting to see what they do with it. They will. I can see it going away. I can see it probably going away, too. Well, I, I think as they expand Galaxy's Edge, to, they but... might do that. Here's the in my real honest opinion on this. You were going to have these state of the art attractions going up against an attraction that's how many years old at this point? That still gets long waits. Yes, because it's the only thing Star Wars that's <laughs> there. But, that well, yes, the it actually is. <laughs> that I mean, is come not on now. You have this and two other attractions. What else are you going to do? I would like to see them add the the chase scene from Episode Two on Coruscant. I like that one where they go through the speeder and Anakin jumps out. And I love that scene. The other reason why I see this closing is because it doesn't make sense for the storyline that they're proje they're projecting right now. Yeah. Could, could you imagine a uh, a ride that takes some of the uh, flat of passage technology but puts you on a speeder bike? Ooh, That's what I'm saying. Awesome. Give me an X wing. You know, well, I'm, I'm thinking the speeder bike would be. I think a little easier because you'd have your own vehicle like you have with the Banshees. And it's basically the same damn size. I mean, you could almost do like a control C, control V and uh, yeah. just, just copy no, it. Yeah. And, right. and, 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 and you can replicate you that, uh, that amazing sequence, you know, with Luke on, on, on the bike. That, that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be awesome. The whole end Yes. Yeah. And then you could have Warwick Davis. <laughs> Seems like that's all we're focused on this episode. Is is just fucking. We need Warwick Davis at Disney World. Well, there's there's our title for the show. He's gonna be More fucking Warwick Davis. He's gonna be fucking eighty in one of those little little tiny electric wheelchairs. Just like he's like, I'll do anything for money. Oh God, what? He's gonna he's gonna buy one of those little Tesla Power Wheels. Like, <laughs> wasn't it wasn't it last last week? You guys were talking about like meet and greets or whatever, and I wanted to meet fucking Rhino from. Uh, the Bolt movie, just get Warwick Davis to be Rhino and put him in a big <laughs> plastic ball. Um, okay, so if you had a lightsaber, what color would it be, Trenton? Red. Tim. 
Red. Adam. Blue. Mikey. I'm checkered. I, I'm Irish. It'd be checkered. It'd be plaid. <laughs> I've gone plaid. <laughs> or it would just fade from like like RGBs. <laughs> It'll strobe. Yeah. It'd be rainbow. <laughs> and it, it, it would just it would just drip plasma off the end of it every so often, you know, <laughs> while I'm walking around with it because I gotta I need to take my vitamins. The Jedi, the <laughs> Jedi drip. Limb. Yes, I got the Jedi drip. I got I got I got a condition. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, an 18th century remedy that like five people will get. Scott would be purple, <laughs> right? Like Mace Windu. No, I hate that one. I would be blue. I like blue. I like the blue one. My favorite. All right, so real quick, your favorite character of all time in Star Wars? Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Are we? Are we? Should we exclude the major characters? Can we? No, exclude no, no, the no, major characters no. Or? Major characters included. Oh, Darth Vader, without question. Yeah. Same. Adam. Are we talking books too? Sure. <laughs> as long as they're still canon. As long as they're still canon. Sure. I don't. I. I like Thrawn. He's an evil fuck. Uh, yeah, I don't know who that is. That, exactly. So, <coughs> <coughs> he's a badass, but, like, does, I mean, if I have to choose a major, I would choose Vader, but... Which, that reminds me, I have to get on Michael Hendry. He's designing my Vader tattoo. Mikey, what about you? I like Han. Just because he's he's a little you know a little cowboy, he's a little scruffy looking nerf herder. Yeah, I, I like I like Han just because he's uh, he's very independent. Well, he's not really, but he he thinks he's he is codependent. He likes to he likes to put up that facade, you know. He likes to think he wears the pants. Yeah, and they're they're snug. Sure he wears the pants, and he doesn't wear any <laughs> pants. No, I, I've always I've always liked Han. I guess because he reminds me a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, Malcolm, I guess Malcolm Riddle's probably reminds me a lot of Han, but I like Firefly, so that's that's where I am. I go Han. Oh, Firefly. He also awesome. fucked Leia, so he's got that going for him. Yeah, yeah, and then his son killed him. So he spoilers. Yeah. Uh, that's one that theory. The other theory him. is that he helped his son kill himself. So no, for me, for me, it's definitely. <laughs> It's definitely Obi Wan. Obi Wan's my favorite character <coughs> of all time. It's because he can. It's because he can say Sir Alec Guinness and talk about fucking London. It's the only reason he likes Obi Wan. <laughs> well, well, Sir well, Alec Guinness oh. is an amazing actor to begin with, and Star Wars aside, he's an amazing actor. What else is he? Inside? But I want to see more of Obi Wan before I make that kind of. Oh, criticism. see, I love if the saving grace for the prequel trilogy is you and McGregor. Well, he was better than Alec Guinness. Yes, and then I'm going to sit on an See, island like... and wait for a boy to grow up for 300 years. No. No. I, I like that era Obi-Wan better in Clone Wars than I did in the prequels. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes, yeah. No, I'll agree with that. I, th I think Obi-Wan... Obi-Wan in the Clone Wars is a much... Is, is probably one of the most dynamic characters of that that series. Yeah. Clone Wars has a lot of dynamic Dude, characters. That, when Clone you Wars. really watch Clone Wars, there's some really good writing going on with those. Yeah. So I think the better question here is who are everyone's second favorite Star Wars characters? Because I feel like everyone kind of copped out. Well, I, nobody knew who mine was, so... I didn't cop out. Well, you went hipster on us and we're like... Can I choose the books? How is that hipster? Because I read. I like that guy before he was famous. No, he's been famous for quite a while. You just don't know your Star Wars history. Trent, did you know who it was? <laughs> did I know who it was? <laughs> yes. I mean, I've looked at lists of the most powerful Sith. Yeah, kind of. Did you read the book? No. Tim, did you read that book? I'm a reader. No, I didn't have to. My husband read the book, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, second favorite? That's easier, I think. I mean, that's, that's going to be more of a, I mean, obviously I already said Grievous, but. That's easy for me. Captain Rex from Star Wars. <laughs> Ahsoka. 
Mikey's is Jar Jar, right? No, it's Boba. <laughs> Mikey's definitely Jar Jar. It's the Fett, man. Fett's vet. It's my, my backpack. It's got jets. See, he I got killed by a fucking sandworm. He also Did he was though? in the movie oh, for like 13 minutes. He got killed by a de by a desert vagina. Yeah, but <laughs> with teeth. The second favorite character I think would be R2. Really? Yeah. He's got sass, man. <laughs> R2 is definitely a good hero. I like R2. Not Kylo? Oh, Kylo's a whiny little emo bitch. I can't oh, I just wanted I to start an argument. Kylo. I just wanted to start an argument. That's but he's got that <laughs> wide chest. Dude. <laughs> that was creepy dude, as fuck. he looked fuck. big as fuck. Okay. Fucking I, hey, juicy. I heard that, I heard that Kylo Robert guy is ripped. does not look like that in real life. No, he does. I heard that Kylo guy is ripped. <laughs> it's like, it's like, nah, Kylo's a bitch. He's like, no, he's not. He's swole. <laughs> Dude, no. Just Last Jedi, him. he's fucking massive. He cries way too much. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's he's, 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 he's as not as much of a whiny bitch as fucking Luke was. Oh, no. Luke is a whiny bitch. He throws fucking tantrums. Luke is not my tantrums. favorite. Luke is a whiner, too. I don't know. So he earned that, that, though, man. Lost his freaking arm. Earned being a whining bitch? Yes. He only lost He was a whiny bitch before he lost his arm. I got a I question. He didn't lose his why arm, he did, lost a hand. Why did Luke's Let's mechanical arm disappear with him when he fucking turned into a force ghost? Wouldn't it just fall off and hit the floor? Well, it was only a hand. It was only a hand. Right, but still, it's Still, mechanical. it should still be there. He has a point. That's, that is a good point. It'd still be there. Unless he wasn't wearing it when he was meditating. I mean, Vader's got all of his regular fucking go. limbs back as a force ghost. No, he doesn't. Oh, no, I'm, he's talking but about when, when he died. when Vader became a oh, force oh, ghost, oh, oh, he oh, became oh, a force ghost as yeah. Anakin, not as Vader. Right. And he didn't come back like when he died. But, his body. But was in the still original, there. Anakin is old before the redo with Hayden Christensen, and he's got all his limbs. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But that was as a force ghost, right? So, right but he's still but old. He like when he but died, he, returns... he should have dropped his hands, and he didn't. But but the whole point of the force ghost was he returns to what Anakin was before he became Darth Vader. I under I that was the only edit that George Lucas did that makes sense. Mm. To turn it into what, what he changed him to Aiden Christensen? Yeah. Because if uh, if everybody else got old But but they were always still a Jedi. He went back to being a Jedi. He went back to his force He was never a Jedi. He was never a Jedi. He was a Jedi, he, was a... he wasn't a Jedi master. No, he was never a yes, Jedi. To actually he was. he was a no. Padawan. He said we in the movies he was a Mace Windu <laughs> said we Cole accept you as a Jedi. Cole. But you do he not became, sit as a master on this council. Yeah, he became a he became oh, a Jedi Knight. Right. He was a Padawan murdering crazy son of a bitch. That's when he turned to the Sith. Who didn't like sand? That's when he turned to the Sith. I yeah. He's the, he. I think it was always there. There was always clues there that he was the Sith. All right. So if you're if you're if you get one vehicle in real life from the Star Wars universe, what would you get? Like, you get to have a, a delivery out of your front door as to what vehicle you get. What do you get? Trent. That's easy. Star Destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put, just put it in the driveway. <laughs> Wait, are we, talking, are we talking practical or? The kills are fucking HOA. Yeah, that's what I'm, I, that was my question. You're such a size queen, Trenton. <laughs> I could have picked bigger. There was bigger in Last Jedi. Star Destroyer is just the, uh, just the classic. Uh, no, it's got to be a one a one person vehicle. You got to operate it yourself. Um, probably Darth Maul's uh, speeder or his uh, his little his, his little ship. Vespa. No, the one that looks like the Batmobile, <laughs> the long, thick, flat one. <laughs> Again, sorry, it's like a fucking wow, like a fucking udon noodle that he's riding around in, painted black. <laughs> Oh, I man. see a spaceship <laughs> and I want to paint it black. <laughs> no colors wow. anymore. <laughs> oh, we well, you know Mikey's gonna say Slave One. <laughs> no, yes, actually, I'm not. <laughs> Mikey, that what big would you? Dumbass, pick? impractical flying potato. No one wants to fucking drive. <laughs> no, that. I, it's a you flying, know, no, it's a flying coffin. It's a flying sideways coffin. The, 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 yeah, I never understood the physics of that fucking ship. To well, we can have life. a whole episode on the physics of, of flying vehicles in right. Star but Wars I, I would have to say, you know, to, to, to go with what Scott's rules were with this, I would go with an ATST. Mm, 
just because I could fit in there and I could get in it right now and go to the grocery store. <laughs> and don't have to worry about the <laughs> physics of it. Walking over to Walmart. <laughs> yeah, right? You know, okay, funny, funny story. A uh, long time ago in a galaxy funny far, far TV. away, on my previous job, I was working with a guy and we were talking about Star Wars. We were talking about AT-ATs. And like, what does that mean? What, what does it even stand for? And I said, well, it stands for all-terrain. All-terrain? It's got four legs. I said, well, what about ATST? I said, well, obviously it's all-terrain and some terrain. <laughs> because <laughs> it only has two it only has two yeah that's what I'd roll I, I'd cruise that I could take it on cruise night man go up and down Main Street my ATST pew 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 shooting people to get in your way uh, Tim what would you pick well since you said we had to be able to fly it by ourselves well you had to operate it by yourself you that rules out the Millennium Falcon so I'm no, doing Darth do Vader's TIE Fighter you could do it one. You could do Millennium no, you Falcon can't. as one. You can't fly. Millennium Falcon can't I mean, it's probably myself. better with a co-pilot, but you could probably fly it by yourself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Adam, what about you? I'm going with um, Phasma's TIE Fighter. Phasma has a TIE Fighter? Yes, she does. I don't remember that at all. It's in Battlefront, isn't it? Was it in the movies? She flies it. Did she? I don't thought it was her. I want a I Death remember. Star. <laughs> <laughs> now you Either really way, are a TIE size fighter. queen. We have a whole episode on that fucking Death Star because how the fuck does a Death, Death Star go in a light speed? Well, you're just bending light around it. Yeah. It's got that's, no hyperdrive, does it? That's another show. Um, yes, aerodynamics don't exist in space because it's a vacuum. I, I'm so it could literally be a fucking but brick. something the size of a fucking moon? Am I the only good guy here? I would want the X-Wing. Like, I'm the only... Because that's it's practical. Not unique. But it's so cool. Why not an A-Wing? Actually, oh, why would um... They weren't... They were kind of like... New, they were kind of like pre-X-Wing, but the X-Wings that they fly in that, um... Uh, uh, episode 3... On that the battle scene, they're oh. like. Uh... I don't know if you can see it. That's Phasma's tie fighter. It's got silver. It's chrome, just like Phasma. Yeah, oh. chrome. <laughs> it's the West Coast Customs version. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dog! I heard you like tie fighters. <laughs> no, nothing from the. Oh, the ATTs. Yeah. Yeah. I want to fly. I, I would love an. I would love an X-wing. I like this. The only one that didn't pick a flying ship was Mikey. I want to get just stuck on the ground. I'm practical, man. I <laughs> just go to the grocery store and I go to work. Can you yeah, said you deliver pizzas. I can pizzas? you going to the grocery store. Where are you going to put your groceries? <laughs> I'll hang them. I'll hang the bags off the uh, blasters. It's got plenty of trunk space. <laughs> I got some aftermarket that, parts that is, from West Coast Customs. That is the one thing I will say, Adam. We don't have any trunk space. No. But I'm using mine to kill things. <laughs> but, but we can get to Disney World at light speed. At, or Mikey is. There you go. Mikey is. I, 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 there, don't, I don't <laughs> think that the uh, can t the Tie Fighters have the ability to warp. Yeah. Yeah. They have light speed. Yes. Don't they? It's not, it's not Star Trek. You don't want to warp. Whatever. Like, then why do they even it. have to worry about this traveling with a destroyer? I mean, literally, why couldn't they just send, like, a little splinter cell of, of TIE fighters to wherever the hell the, the rebels were? He's got a point there. Well, you need, you need the, the support of the maintenance facilities of a Star Destroyer. That's why. I don't no, it's, it's, it's a splinter cell. It's like, I mean, it's just, it's, man, why not? Why do you need the whole everything? You can find you everything out with, like, you know, a ghost recon level uh, infiltration from uh, the Empire. They didn't take advantage of the technology they had. Fucking idiots. Uh, no, this is... A, they're busy building planet... Or, or, I'm sorry, star killers. Vader's TIE Fighter had hyperdrive. The others did not. Not all of them yeah, did. not all of them did. Some of them did. There's an actual question that popped up on... Do TIE... I literally typed in, do TIE, and then it came up with, have hyperdrive. Vader, Vader's TIE Fighter has twin ion drives. 
So, okay, so um, last last one before we call it a night. Best song, aka score, from any of the movies. Imperial March. Imperial March. Yeah, that's no. pretty iconic. Luke's song. Yeah, Luke's song on Tatooine. Luke's song. No, Imperial I like him. I played when, it in when, band. When, I really like the Imperial March. It is iconic. When oh, The Force Awakens opened and you had that version of Luke's song playing, it, I just lost it. Yeah, chills. So oh. it's, it's either Imperial March Although or Although I Duel do love Fates. Imperial March. It's my ringtone on my phone, but... Duel of Fates is really good, too. Yeah, Duel of Fates is amazing. You guys ever hear mm-hmm. Galact- the, the band Galactic Empire? No. Oh, God. You have it on your phone? Triton okay. has, apparently. So do I. I listen to it all the fucking time. Um... They actually play dressed up as the lead guitarist Star is Darth Wars Vader. Uh, the drummer is Boba Fett. Their other guitar player is the Red the Imperial guard. Troopers or the Guard Troopers. The yeah. Guard. The Imperial March is so iconic. It it really is. That's that's a tough one to beat. Um, funny story. The uh, the nat the Nationals, Washington Nationals, were playing down in Atlanta, and normally when opposing batters walk up for they're at bat. They don't get any kind of like music. Um, as as Bryce Harper's walking up to the dish, the Atlanta PA system plays the or the Atlanta organist plays the Imperial March. He then hit a home run. The next pitch. You gotta do what you gotta do. Bad motherfuckers. Yeah. Do bad motherfucker shit. It it is a great one. But I would say I I agree with Tim. Luke's song that that uh, uh, the the Tatooine scene with the dual the dual sons beautiful or the cantina song oh. <laughs> <laughs> that'll get stuck in your head <laughs> that's definitely an earworm. and right now there are there are 500 listeners just going hopefully uh but look we love talking about stars we could talk about Star Wars all night i mean literally all night so we want to thank you for joining us this week on Three Sheets of Mouse. If you did enjoy the show, head over to iTunes. Let us know how we're doing. Leaving a review is one of the best ways to help others like yourselves find the show. And I want to sp- send a special thank to a bunch of people who left us a, uh, a, a, fi- a couple five stars reviews uh, this week. Rob W, Amax3, Lapu Lover, Davalos82. By the way, if that's not Martin Davalos, I'll be sad. Martin Davalos is a uh, crickets, crickets, crickets. Uh, yeah, it's a BMX motocross guy. Uh, he did actually leave a good review. It said, "I listen, I drink, I laugh, I Disney." Yeah. Uh, Songbird CC, uh, three sheets of the mouse is an amazing podcast that deals with all things Disney with a little bit of debauchery thrown in for good measure. Whether it be Disney drinking, eating, or enjoying the rides, these five hosts take you on an entertaining journey. As is always the case with close friends, there there are lively discussions which may or may not end up in a fight. But at the end of the day, Three Sheets Nation is a family and we all love each other, even though we may not always agree with each other. Ears of Happiness, thank you everybody for your for your reviews. We love them. Go over to iTunes. If you're on the Facebook group, I posted a link to how you can leave a review. Uh, give us give us some love. If you love the show, great. If not, let us know how we're doing. You know. We want to make the show better for you guys. If you like the show, great. We'll keep doing what we're doing. If not, let us know how we can change it. Uh, if you also want to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, we're over there at Three Sheets Podcast. Check that out. We post some pictures from the parks when we're down there. Post some pictures outside of the parks when we're not down there. We post our show notes there. Go over there. Check it out. But if you really want to interact with us, head over to the Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Three Sheets. That's where you can become part of Three Sheets Nation. We had a lot of people join recently. Trent, welcome to quartet of uh, of new sheeters to the group uh, last night. Little foreplay uh, hope- action for Trenton. Yeah, hopefully those are finding their way and learning all about the great the, the great nation that is Three Sheets Nation. So uh, come hang out with us there. If you have friends that love Disney as <coughs> much as you do, invite them. Invite them to be part of Three Sheets Nation. It's a lot of fun. But Mikey, what what do they need to do? Vote. Vote. <laughs> Let your voice be. I don't really know. I'm, I'm playing with the, I broke my plastic fork and I'm saddened right now. Uh, if you really want to be. Um, the good silverware? 
<laughs> yeah, my, my, my good cutlery, I, I've, I've splintered The it. good china. Uh, if you really want to be, um, you know, someone who's a hardcore supporter and hipster for Three Sheets Nation, you want to go over to the MagicalMeltdown.com, check out what shirts are available at the Tee Public Store site, and also uh, procure yourself some uh, some drink. I'm going to call it drinking apparel because it's what you want to clothe your alcohol in. Everything yeah. from wine glasses to koozies to, uh, you know, beer Glasses and Glen Cairns, which uh, we're selling a lot of Glen Cairns here lately. Uh, nice. You know, orders coming in two weeks in a row. Uh, so you know, you want to make sure you get 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 your hands on those. Uh, you know, before you're a conformist, you want to be a pioneer because nobody, no one wants to be late to the party. Nobody wants to like panic at the disco at 2018. Uh, but no, definitely go over there get some get some three sheets glassware. Uh, I think uh, Tim and Adam, you guys have your three sheets glass for tonight. Yep. Yes. I got mine. I got my drinking out of the rocks glass. Mikey, where's your three sheets koozie? Uh, off my three sheets <laughs> leather coaster. Yes, off I've... mine. But uh, but no, definitely definitely go over go over to three sheets or go over to www.themagicalmeltdown.com. Check out the T Public. Check out the glassware store. Get yourself some three sheets drinking wear because if you're not drinking your scotch or your bourbon or your, your rosé rosé out of some three sheets glassware, you, you're doing it wrong. It doesn't taste like Disney. That's right. It doesn't taste like debauchery and regret. Shame. I regret nothing except <laughs> the prequels. <laughs> At least the first one. Uh, but Mikey, you messed up my you messed up my line. If you do yep. want to be part of Three Sheets Nation, make sure you guys answer the question. We have a couple of uh, couple of friend requests or a couple of uh, join request posts waiting for Perfect. you to answer the questions. Make sure you do. They're real simple. What do you like? What's your favorite uh, Disney attraction? What do you like to drink? And why do you want to become part of Three Sheets Nation? Answer the questions. We'll gladly let you in. It's not the Illuminati, but you know we're close. We do influence Disney. So, uh, speaking of influencing people and their and their drink selection, Tim, give me some closing remarks tonight. Just gonna say good night. I'm done. Trenton. All right. So I have a couple pages here to read off. Tim, you can get over it. Uh, I, I'm just kidding. Um, prequels aren't bad. Uh, I have a dissertation here. Hold on. Prequels are still Star Wars. Hayden Christensen didn't do a bad job. Uh. Scott's, yeah, Scott's one of the sand people. That's why, uh, that's why he doesn't, that's why he doesn't like Anakin. Uh, I, I don't, I don't like hating Christensen either. I, it's, he, he didn't do a bad job. It was, it was poor writing. Um, it was poor acting and poor writing. It was poor acting and poor writing. Well, Have you seen Joker? Given shit, you get shit. I'm just saying, you gotta show emotion to be a, uh, a Sith. So anyway, uh, thanks for Are being a part of this. Are you speaking in absolutes? <laughs> Did you see that the other day too? Yeah, I think we only, only a Sith speaks in absolutes. As a Jedi says yes. that, and that's a fucking absolute. Well, the Jedi are hypocritical. Yeah, they're a bunch of dicks. Anyway, um, thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for listening to us. Thanks for dealing with our bullshit. Thanks for listening to our shitty opinions. Thanks for listening to us fight. Uh, there'll probably be a poll somewhere in after this episode about something. That involves me being right. So, uh, <laughs> it's definitely going to be biased towards what my opinion is. Um, but, uh, we'll, we'll, is Hayden Christensen we'll, we'll the greatest actor of all time? Yeah, we'll, you. we'll talk to you next week, man. Uh, Trenton, before you go, yeah, uh, yeah. you got some meetups coming up. Yeah, it's April 23rd. And the, uh, the beach at the Poly. Or grabbing drinks up at the, the Poly bar and heading down to the beach to watch the uh, fireworks. That's for Brant and Sydney's uh, honeymoon. Um, it's going to be about 10 of us right now, so definitely, you know, it's it's 14 days away, 15 days away, so definitely let us know soon if you're going to be there. Um, so, so you're crashing the honeymoon. Is there going to be a betting ceremony? Oh, yeah. Not a wedding without a betting, Tim. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Will it they are staying at the play? poly, so every, everyone just head over to, uh, to the room. You can watch from the balcony. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Top floor. Lakeview, baby. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so that's um, Triton's at the Barefoot Pool Barefoot Bar. Barefoot Pool Bar. Okay, so we're getting drinks at the yeah. Barefoot Pool Barefoot Pool Bar, and we're heading down to the uh, 
the beach to watch the uh, Happily Ever After fireworks. Um, and then I'm sure somebody else will cover the uh, the meetup in November. I'll be at that one as well. But uh, the one in April, let us know if you're going to be there. There's a, a group or a, a special event circulating. If you want to be a part of that, uh, make sure you contact, contact Brant Burke or myself or Sydney or somebody that you know was going to be there and we can get you added onto that event. There you go. Adam, you got some meetups coming up. All right. Yes. Next uh, meetup after that will be May 16th at Jock Lindsay's. It'll be Tim and I around 7.30, and that's May 15th. I think it was a Tuesday? That's a Tuesday. I don't remember the exact date. It's a Tuesday. October 4th through 9th, we also have the Sheeters on the High Seas Five Night Bermuda Cruise, which will be myself, Tim, and Mikey. And the Nam Dudes. On that one. And the Nam Dudes. Maybe someone else. And think, I think that's... I think someone else. I think, I think it's Cheryl Pavia is going to be there. I'm, I'm not Few of us are going on so. that. There's a couple um, of people. There, there of are still ones. rooms available. There, There's very few, but if you want to get on it, get on it now. Yes, get on it to the rather than later. And then um, our bigger meetup, the ultimate meetup with all the hosts attending at least one event. And that is going to be our November 1st through November 5th. Possibly extending longer ultimate cheater meetup for our oh crap, um, wine and dine half 5k 10k whatever you can run run marathon and that's that's a that's a long time uh, that's a we're gonna be there for a while so if you're down there at any time during that you know you'll find us in the park so uh, we got we got some um, going on there are some special yeah, there ones. are some special things going on what are those Adam um, Saturday the 3rd is a early dinner, late lunch kind of thing at Whispering Canyon Cafe. And the Monday, we have beer garden dinner. If those, if you're interested in those, we need to know right away because we need to count, have a head count to make a reservation. So the sooner you let us know, the sooner you get on the list, the sooner you have a chance of getting in. We need to have all those reservations by the 1st because that's when fast passes start coming up. So... I'm sorry, not fast passes. Um, ADRs. Reservation ADRs. window opens up. So the ADRs open up really soon. So if it's something that you're even thinking about doing, please let us know and we'll get you on the list. And that's all I have to say. Good night, folks. Awesome. Uh, you know, I had fun with the show. I love talking Star Wars with four guys who love talking Star Wars back with me. Even though, Trenton, I respect your opinion on the prequels. I do. I've always said, I've never hated the prequels like you think I do. It's always better than no Star Wars. Always. You just say it out loud a lot, so... I just... It's, they're not <laughs> as good as the original. <laughs> I say it with my mouth. Um, love it. Thank you guys for indulging me on this week's Star Wars episode. So, from all of us here at Three Sheets of the Mouse, thank you for making our show part of your Disney life. Thank you for your time, this time... And until next time, so long for just a while. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you. Dramatic pause. <laughs>